if anyone is uh, already... Have you faded it? Is it starting? Can you see what's going on right now? <laughs> what's going on? Is it to anyone listening, no, oh my god, this is how it. This is how this episode is going to go. No, it started. Come on, we we got to go. It's like the the. Fuck's sake. To anyone listening, you can't sure see. We We've got coffee going in, milk going in, coffee. We've got tortellini on the table. Oh, Keelan, please turn my headphones down. It's so loud. <sighs> is it this one? Oh. Yeah, there we go. Uh, welcome back to the Motors Podcast. This is going to be one of those episodes that if you're not a fan of us just chatting absolute guff, you're going to hate it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, we haven't hit. Yeah, come on then. Do that, I guess. We'll just sit here and listen. I'm gonna eat your tortellini unless you start eating That's it. That's fine. No, no, no. I feel like I've I've had um, the most of it. So your tortellini that you put barbecue sauce on because you didn't have any sauce. Which is which is what you're eating. Yeah, and you're loving. It's it. actually really nice. So it's really good. Um, yeah. This is Sam Sutherland, everyone. Who? Oh, um, how do we? I don't know. I don't know how to introduce this. English man. people will know who he is, but I feel like there'll yeah. be Americans who's like, who, who's this guy? No, that was. <laughs> what was that? I think. Guy? I think I think he. A lot of people inside the parkour community do know who Sam is. If you don't, then this is probably a good podcast to listen to because there's a lot of interesting stuff. He's an interesting man. Can yeah. we can we get the first question out of the way of how tall are you? Okay, so this is actually up for debate because I normally say I'm six foot seven inches tall, yeah, which is about two hundred and three centimeters. Is that right? Two hundred three centimeters. Mm, fact but, check it. Yeah, maybe. Something like that. Oh, how, checking. how do they measure it in Europe? Because they don't use... A lot of people do centimetres, yeah. yeah. yeah centimeters. So 203 centimetres. Centimeters. But then I've had a lot of people come up to me who are also tall, mm. like the same the same height. And I'm like, yeah, I'm six foot... Like, how tall are you? I'm, I'm like six foot seven. I'm like, no, you're not. You're six foot five. Really? And I'm like, are you sure? And he's like, yeah, man, I got measured. I'm six foot five. And I'm like, so... Maybe I need to actually get properly measured. You should probably yeah. do it. I mean, you know, six, seven should. is two metres pretty much bang on. It doesn't go into it perfectly, but, okay. you know... Cheers, producer there bloggy. There we are. It's funny because, I mean, for people who don't know, I grew up with Sam pretty much. So all of my, like, old, for years, like, growing up doing parkour, me and Sam have both, yeah, we've done it at the same time. But you never used to be tall. To be honest, no. you were always a bit taller than me, but uh, you never struck me as someone who was really tall. But everyone yeah. in your family is tall. That's yeah. what, that's Part what, from your mum and your sister, actually. That's what puberty does. I never yeah, saw but your brother coming. and your dad, your brother's massive, your yeah. dad's massive, like, yeah. really tall. Yeah, and I, and and you just weren't, and then suddenly it just. Well, I I used to be the small kid. Do you know what I mean? Like everyone else had hit puberty. It was like it's like year nine. Everyone's hit puberty and starts getting like hairy armpits. And you were just like building up. You were just yeah. It was getting... like all just like yeah, building up, and then in the space of like seven months, it just happened. It, it was funny I just because changed. you. So yeah, to anyone sort of who doesn't know, so Keelan and Sam, you didn't actually grow up like together, together, right? No, but you so we knew went, each other we went to age. yeah. I mean. But, well, uh, what I've written down, my wrote types down on my phone. Sam's pretty much. It's really weird. It's basically basically you're my my long distance best friend. Yeah. But you are basically my best best mate. Aww. But we have a long but we have a long distance relationship at the moment, don't we? Pretty much. It is. Um, is it long if you're an hour away? No, but we like go. We've gone. We've sometimes gone like a few months without seeing each other. Yeah. And then we'll meet each other again, and it's just like. That's, that's cool. It's, that's it's cool. So growing, easy. That's growing up. Yeah, because exactly. I've got I've got a mate like that. Yeah, but then mm. like when we were younger, it was every weekend or yeah, whatever. Yeah, so yeah. You didn't go to the same school. There was time, there, there was a year which I still regard as like one of my favorite training years when it was just me. It was across. It was from summer all through the winter to the mm. next summer, and we spent the entire year going out pretty much three or four times a week yeah, and just training like really good tech. Like we would get out training and we'd be like, or we'd, it would we either learn, be roots learn everything together or it was training. Much. Oh, it was like tech training. Yeah. And that was still, I, that was when I saw you the most in my life. And that yeah. was when I had like a really fun time with parkour as well. Cause I remember we'd obsess so much over the little things. Cause us two were the only ones we, well, it was just us two. Mm. So we'd be obsessing over foot placement and random stuff like that. And ro like roof scouting and things. Yeah. Um, oh, that was rough. It was like, it wasn't the, our, our type of training. There were some days when we would go out and we wouldn't train at all. It would just be like spot hunting. Yeah. yeah and yeah. our training, like it was still the just way in which fun. we did parkour. It was fun, but it was like, it was, I don't train like that anymore. Like I don't mm. go out, try, find a run, try, find a new spot. It's always 
It's more of a, a spontaneous day out. I mean, what your training now consists of, apparently, is rocking up, being like, I haven't trained in months, and then doing <laughs> really hard challenges that no one else can do. Yeah, your mental game's pretty fucked. We, sorry, um, oh, sorry. We went out yesterday in... Um, Oh, I keep forgetting the name of it. It's that. Crawley. Yeah, but it's Crawley. not. It's Branford. Or it's, it's the oh, is it? Yeah. Branford. It's not Branford, but it's somewhere. It's some little place next to Crawley. It's it's the spot that Stora went to in their last video. Mm -hmm. We saw it and we were like, that would be sick to go to. And also mm -hmm. we had to pick George up because he was going to America and Crawley's next to Gatwick Airport. So it all worked out perfectly. Mm. Sam came along, did the scary arm jump that Drew did and did the running rail pre that Benj did. Mm -hmm. Like just as if, not as if they were nothing. You obviously build up and things, but it was very impressive. I really yeah. like seeing you in that. And you don't space. train. Like, it's not like you're Benj and you train every day. You train every so yeah. often. So. I don't, like, that's a, that's an interesting thing I found about training, though. Whenever I've come to, like, the HQ with you and you've showed me a couple of challenges in, like, the parkour section and you're, like, doing a cat leap and then you, like, like you uh, do a dino, like, dino 360. <laughs> and that's, like, such such intricate technique and training and, like, muscle training to be able to get that pop which is something, which is a type of training which I've never really, really moved into, like that real sort of, yeah, technical movement. It's always been, the, the, the movement I think I thrive on is more high up stuff. I feel like, like it's always very and, mentally like one challenging. Your mental stuff. game's very good. I yeah, think I, think, yeah. I think I've got some strength with that. But I love it because anyone else who doesn't train for like a month, or, or well, let's say a less than a month, whatever, then comes back and does scary shit usually they're quite sketchy and you'd think of them as sketchy, but you can really see, especially from the Crawley session we just had, you hadn't trained in a while and you were doing two scary things, mm. but you're so in the zone. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like when you were prepping for the arm jump, you were balancing on the rail for ages. And I just like watching your brain go between things and just yeah, everyone yeah, has yeah. those mannerisms that they do as did well. You, did you notice and you the were weird breathing, breathing thing? I Literally did. about to say, like, like a that. sumo wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> like, you go, I've started doing that recently and I, like, I'm watching the video back and I'm like, why why am I doing that? I was actually like curious as to like if it's actually helping what it's actually doing, whether I don't know. Doing that quick like I mean or like yeah. You do obviously get people who very consciously employ a lot of like breath control to like mm. calm themselves down and things. So maybe you're just subconsciously doing your own version of that. Mm. I think so, because when I'm when I was on the edge of the rail, for instance, like I could really my head, there was a lot of like adrenaline, like my heart was pumping and I felt very like like a lot was going on. I feel like my vision actually like got a bit more enclosed and I couldn't see as well. And doing that like really fast intake of breath, like whoosh, whoosh, like sort of pumping oxygen and you're a bit like, okay. And it, it clears it up yeah, a little bit. Yeah, like that's, yeah. what, that's what I feel like the feeling gave me. It was a bit of like clarity and like what's going on and being like, okay, now I'll go. It was funny because you were like, when you were looking at the rail, uh, the arm jump, you were like, oh yeah, I need to like lower down to mm -hmm. get like to, to that when you stood on it and then you lowered down it didn't look as scary mm. for me that's obviously not such an issue but i guess from like because that's a fucking high rail it's like two stories up mm. you standing on it because there is that thing at the end of the day it's like if you're jumping a gap your eye level is higher than it's the it takes you up and obviously yeah. like for you it fucking you're tall like, yeah. yeah yeah i'm like right up there looking yeah at yeah it. you're adding a lot um, more like height vis visually for mm. it mm. you said something about focusing on on or like vision even though you were saying you felt like it was tough yeah. or whatever yeah. i just you had a memory wait are you this yeah, yeah. For, people, for people who so can't much. for people <laughs> I who want to know what this. this is you have to switch over to youtube but i'm holding my my hands up as binoculars over my eyes yeah um because sam used to i mean you still kind of do it now and then right it's, yeah but you, you used to do it a lot more yeah when we especially when we'd be training we did a lot of roof training for ages yeah like only roof training and some of the shit was so there's so much going on construction workers or people trying to shout at you and especially when you're being kicked off yeah and you'd always put your binoculars on because it's and it kind of does work because you it you've, does you're work, phasing man. out everything physically so you've got yeah. some security guard like mate get the fuck off yeah, the roof you're, and like, you're like sorry mate <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah right, come. <laughs> hold you it's, it's mm. the thing of like it's that thing of when you're looking at like a jump and there's that massive drop below you. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And say like, yeah, say it's like a height drop and you're trying to stick to a rail. You sort of just wanted to look at like the distance and just like oh, shut sure. everything off and just focus in and be like, okay, that's actually the distance. It's sort of, yeah, allowing yourself to, to focus in a bit more. Yeah, because mm -hmm. yesterday was, I mean, that's the prime example of that because it's high and I stood on that, I really wanted to do that arm jump and it was bigger than I expected. Mm. And I stood on that rail and all I could think about was like, if this was lower, I'd probably just lob it because yeah. I could take, like I could hit, if, if, if I, I don't think I'd miss my hands, but it was like, 
you know, you need a splat or whatever. Mm. But it, it was just high enough that I was like, ah. But technically yeah. that shouldn't make a difference if you put your binoculars on. Yeah, true. <laughs> so. but you're, yeah, people should start trying it. We should train them like those cyberpunk goggles. Can't we sell like that? That's that a like, new fucking, we're going to sell motors binoculars, but they don't actually, <laughs> they don't actually have like zooming in function. They're just, it's just two toilet rolls. That's an interesting thing about, stress or like fear and adrenaline before a challenge like the fact that your eyesight like normally you can see pretty far around you like pretty three like you've got a wide span but when you're when you're like scared or stressed like it goes very closed in yeah mm -hmm. and so when i was on top of the rail and i was like trying to balance and shit i realized how much my eyesight had gone in and how much i wasn't like i was struggling to balance because of that and as mm -hmm. soon as i like opened my actually Consciously was like, I'm going to look around me a bit more and like looked at the ground and I got mm. a better bearing of my oh, balance. That's interesting. I, like, oh, I feel way more confident now. I've actually Which realized I'm scared and what's happening to me. That's, yeah, Which is the opposite of the binoculars. I st maybe it's the type of challenge or maybe you just like now you just... They're, a, they're, they're using, using a certain scenario. Yeah. Yeah. They're using a certain scenario. I, um, I do like it sometimes when you do something that is like scary or sort of, I don't know, takes a lot of focus. And then afterwards you're like, you don't really remember anything else apart. Oh, like you shit. can tell how focused you were. It's almost like you get that same feeling when you drive down a road and you're like, how the fuck did I get here? <laughs> Except yeah. in, in the challenge, you know how you got there, but you it's can't, like autopilot. But you can't yeah. think about like somebody having a conversation over there. You just kind of like it, that all disappears and you're just like, Oh, I was quite at one in the yeah. moment there. That like, that feels quite well, good. If you've ever done a roof gap, like a very scary roof gap or something that's very scary and like, you you finish it you like you've rolled off and you're running off and you're like i just blacked out yeah <laughs> blacked out for 10 seconds like, i don't i wasn't mm. like conscious when that was happening that's what happens yeah. when you smash your head on the wall <laughs> yeah you've done it's that brain before. damage what smashed my head i feel like i remember Didn't you... one of you had a brick fall on you or something yeah there's a, a clip of that oh my god it was you <laughs> yeah. I, oh, fuck. I don't know where roof. the clip that is yeah the, the school roof in in my village and we used to train on it loads and there's a clip was it, Just you turn doing, your mic a little bit. Were you doing POV? Was it POV? Yeah, it was a, we, we're doing POV. Doing POV and he grabbed a brick. We're doing like it, a silly roof run or something. Yeah. It, was, it wasn't even anything proper. But you pulled the brick out, so it made you fall, and obviously the GoPro came out your mouth. And while the GoPro's rolling, like, like that, <laughs> this is it, yeah. it rolls just at the right time. And in slow motion, Sam's on the floor, and the brick just fucking smashes him right in the side <laughs> of the head. And it's one of those ones where your cheeks kind of like wiggle. Do you know what I mean? It's like, boom. <laughs> Where is that clip? I don't know. I'll, I'll find it. Lost in the but I, I check, check your surfaces, people. Yeah. yeah. I want to go like quickly back and go through. Yeah, I got. I got your, no notes, but Keenan, I've got notes. But Keenan I just want to because we, to be honest, we don't actually talk enough about the past with with you or me or just like yeah. what's happened. Look but I want to hear way. it from from you. <clears throat> um, but yeah, how did you get here? Pretty much is what I wanted to ask. From I mean parkour specifically but what led you into the like movement world mm. i mean i know but yeah like yeah i mean i always say when people ask me like how did you get into parkour i my my quick response is get a trampoline or like i had a trampoline because it's like that's how that's how you can sort of understand do, starting to get comfortable with your body and starting to move in a way it's like if, you, if you're a kid and you have a trampoline it's sort of like free reign to just jump in any sort of yeah angle yeah and axes and just land but movement Definitely started from when we did break dancing back in the day and street dancing. Because mm. I met you when we were like nine or ten. Mm. <clears throat> My first memory of Keelan is walking into what was it called? <laughs> Come on, let's, 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 yeah. let's hear it's a so fucking. It's so funny. <laughs> it's so He's funny. such a wacky. We're both wacky. <laughs> we're so both let's hear wacky. some horrible. He's just there memories. with his like break dancing head spin hat on and his like trackies and stuff what, like with that. The, with the with the with the mesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And then you're just break dancing, and then I just come over and you be like, "Can you do a windmill?" Yeah, it's literally. <laughs> and then what you said, "Can you do a windmill?" And then, and then I tried to do it. And, and then from that day, well, you did a windmill, and then yeah. from that day on, I was Shit, like, man. "This guy's sick." Like we're hanging out. I I kind of don't know how that happened. It was just from there, you just because you when, when you're that young. Those interactions are like that. An yeah. adult wouldn't do that. Yeah. No, it's like, can you do a windmill? And it, uh, well, I mean, you do. You get, can you do a backflip? But you, yeah, you but would go, you're never going to be my friend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but then from then on, you, I think it's so blurry. Like yeah. you kept coming to this same. We kept class. going. Basically, yeah, we just we kept coming to class and we we're doing street dancing. We we're doing a lot of competitions. Wait, wait. So you had street dance at your school? No, it, it was a, like a an additional. Well, it wasn't additional. It was a private, not private. It's just a club. Yeah. Oh, yeah. but it's you a met club in Orpington. But you we met, met at, at that school. club because yeah. we lit. So Sam's from Bromley, 
which is a borough of London, which mm. is kind of borders into Kent slightly. Oh, wait, so you met at the club, not school. Yeah, yeah, yeah literally. Yeah, yeah. But then you went to school together. No. Nearly. Nearly. That was, oh, that's shit. A, those Sorry, are funny I mean, stories, that though. That is funny. That story. is funny. <laughs> I thought you said earlier that you went Sam. to school. <laughs> anyway, no, um, no but uh, yeah, we both just, we live like an hour away from each other, 45 minutes. But in the middle, we went to that breakdance class yeah. and kind of kept doing that. Yeah. And I, I mean, think we, both we of us were just... It. Yeah, but both of us were just very alike compared to some of the other people there, mm. which obviously led to us. Do you remember just us going outside yeah. while while people were like, okay, you can practice what you want, and we'd leave the building and go and find <laughs> spots or like stuff to train, yeah. and they'd always get pissed off and be like, what the fuck are you Why doing? Because like, you, you already knew people at that age. No, we just try it. Like, well, the oh, thing but is, you knew, so you knew what it was. We, yeah. The, yeah. The, I think the way in which it started to come about was we would go to we would do break dancing and it was definitely a, a cool thing like with break dancing to do a flip, flip in yeah. your line like if you're going on stage like to do to do your dance performance in front of the judges like you run in and do a flip and yeah, it was like, yeah. That's sick and then you do your dance routine and i think once we started doing flips we started realizing how much we enjoyed that and then that then led to yeah during class going outside the back trying stuff and then it got to the point where we got less interested in dance and just yeah, the flips became the priority. Yeah, we were yeah, then, yeah. I can't remember the first time we ever actually decided. I think you came around mine. This is it's really funny because if you look at old video, like the old videos of me and Keelan, <laughs> it's like parkour, really rubbishy parkour mixed with break dancing because yeah. we're like it's our transition period yeah, from like yeah, break dancing yeah, yeah. into into parkour. And we had no so, yeah. community though <laughs> for for years. For it was just time. us two, which made it so hard. And then to you started know. coming to the gym, right? In time that was girls. the first yeah. time we probably started realizing like actual parkour yeah, yeah 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 because we were our like our style of training was like solely sort of free running flip based yeah i remember training. i remember what you two were like when you first turned up yeah i kind of think yeah. it was just flips everywhere yeah. especially this guy like <laughs> you probably remember from the first time you went ndga like the, the videos gym. of you yeah just the flips yeah yeah, 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 yeah. But very those, good flips very it, good flips it was like oh you these t two it's very because, young kids can do like a lot of consistently good flips because the but standard of video weird technique yeah. like oh that. really weird technique. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was the we first time yeah we were weak it was the My we, we used to call we used to call it puberty legs yes yeah yeah, yeah because yeah, we did. didn't hit puberty and people we trained with who had who, who just could jump further and do parkour type training we were like yeah you've got puberty legs yeah um, that was our excuse. That was like, our we're, we're, we're not doing parkour because it's like, the truth. Have puberty legs, yeah. It's the truth, though. The truth. To be then, fair, because now our it legs works. were not strong. And I think there are a lot of. I think the the kids who start younger, mm. they simply don't have the strength, and then mm. they. So that a lot of them do start with flips because they're light and they're agile, and then they get and the they puberty into. legs, and then they get strong. It changes the game. It yeah. really does. It does. It was the first time we ever learned that parkour was awesome. Mm. <laughs> Sorry, parkour what? was awesome. The Sound first bite. time we learned that parkour was awesome, yeah, um, was when we the first time we ever went to London and yeah. we met a guy called Ben. What was his last name? Ben Raven. Ben Raven. Yeah, we met Ben Raven. Do you remember Ben? Ben Raven. Ben Raven. I actually Shout don't know. Ben he Raven. was out in London a lot. It was like part of the main London community. Uh, okay. And we just went and we went to IMAX for the first time. And mm. we quickly realized that everyone who was at IMAX that was in our group was doing jumps and we were just like doing flips up the block and that's all we could do. Yeah, yeah. And that's when we realized like, I want to start, we want to start actually doing jumps and, and that was like, yeah, film me doing another windmill on the block. Him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so cringy, but you know, oh, well. but it, for me, when I first saw that at IMAX, I was thinking how big everything was. I don't know if you mm. thought that too. I couldn't Just do suddenly you're like, what the fuck? Like the running pre's actually big. Mm. It's on video when you've never seen it in real life. Yeah, you don't know how big to perceive it in well, your It kind of just mm. looks like not that fun because you're like, well, it looks easy for them. So yeah, it must yeah, be okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, um, I, I don't know how far I'm skipping ahead here, but obviously Bruman is a big, like, a big part of your life. Mm. Can we just go back a tiny bit? Because you said there was a funny story regarding girls. Oh Sam. shit! Yeah, okay. Like, there's a funny story regarding girls. No, Sam. no. I just because you you mentioned school. <laughs> many of those. Many. Water. <laughs> you mentioned school as well. Because the funny thing is, I all of my friends at school, secondary school and stuff, yeah. I just not really in contact anymore with them. Even though they were such good friends, they'll be watching like, this. They will be. They're all lovely people. But it's just everyone Do has separate lives that? now. Like they might be, but I don't think so. Just randomly, some random person you went to school with, is like, oh, I, I saw Keelan was doing that free running stuff. Like, I'm just gonna Google his name, and then he yeah. finds it, and then they're like, 
He like, you alright guys? You alright mate? Yeah, like, right now. Just don't, like, yeah, right. don't don't really know you anymore. Speaking to you. Yeah, like speaking you. to you. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, I didn't. We didn't stay in contact with them because you were friends with them too. Mm. And then we never went to the same school, but stayed in contact the whole time. Yeah. And also saw each other the most. I mean, the main the main bulk of our community at one point was all based really around your area. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You had like Austin and Lewis and Frankie, and they were more closer to you mm. than. The, than they were to me, especially because you were, you went to school together as well. Yeah. So that was a big. But I think they mostly they mostly trained more as I mean I don't know on on what they were thinking, but it was more of maybe a social thing for them because it was a friendship group. Whereas us two were quite. Real, we'd always have the conversations like we never see them train on their own. We'd yeah. always think that yeah. it's like maybe they're not really into it as much. But basically, I think that led to you. You had quite a struggle with school life. Yeah. I just, I, right. I couldn't really connect with anyone at school. I think it's because I was generally just a late developer and the girls and the guys developed cognitively and just physically before me. And so by the time it was like year, year nine, I just, I was, I was very immature. Do you know what I mean? And no one really wanted to connect with like the immature <laughs> parkour flip kid. Um, <laughs> and so, and so all of my friends, I was like, I was like the misfit in my school. Like I was like the sort of weirdo type dude. But then you were getting like excluded and stuff. I remember you got excluded for breaking someone's cartilage in their nose because they threw a panini at you. <laughs> <laughs> Not joking. That did happen. Because he's. Yeah, I remember your mum telling me because I'd, I'd ask because yeah, you because well, we'd see each other a lot, and then your mum was like, "Yeah, you, you can't see Sam," and then you told me about it. Oh, wow. Well, you just you fucked his nose up. Yeah. Well, it, school. School went on the back of it. Like, I wasn't bad. I wasn't bullied or anything like that. I just didn't really have, like, a friendship group. I didn't really have, like, people that I really connected with. And it was just every everyone who I did connect with was outside of school doing parkour. And so I really wanted to move to Keelan School and almost did. Like, I went for a day there. I visited it. But that's what I was saying. Yeah, you yeah, for ages we, we were trying to get you to come over to my school instead. Yeah. Because everyone knew who Sam was. Because I was just luckly, I was quite. Bro, the day I turned up to the school, I was like a celebrity. Keelan was, was, was the popular was, kid, <laughs> and you were the weird loser kid. But well, trust was, me, was, everyone in my year, this, all man. the girls were following you. Yeah. All of them. It was so weird. Like you couldn't write this, man. It was like going from like a school where I'm a nobody and coming into this like new environment and being were you, like, were you like, guy. Were you, were you, you taller at this point or not? No, no, no I was still prepubescent in school. Oh, okay. I can imagine you with like a flock of people around you, and you're like, but he's like, you've always been weird and also like well no <laughs> you've always, always been come on, a man. right weirder yeah. always been but a bit like weird. as in you, you're silly and you don't hide it so coming into my school where i was kind of like similar anyway yeah. i think a lot of people in my school just liked the people who didn't give a fuck yeah so when you came in and you're just like all funny but at the same time you're like well i can't tell this, whether this it was ominous because... person who's come in like everyone's yeah. like who is that mysterious guy. and they all thought you were gonna yeah. everyone loves new kids at my school i can't tell whether it's just because you went to a village school and the fact that maybe people's just minds are a bit different but i was like you're London. I was like, yeah, it was like South London sort of state school. And oh, the sort of you were the bad that, boy. Like, no, no, it's like the, the sort of humour that's within school is that sort of like take the piss out of anyone that's doing anything a bit different. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. you roast each other and it's like that sort of humour of, oh, we, oh, what, like you're dressing like that, you're wearing that, you're mm -hmm. speaking like that, you're trying to be different, like we're going to shut you down. Like, stop. It's, a, it's an interesting one because it, it stops people from develop, like, developing an ego and trying to be like, oh, look at me. But it's also, it it's a bit stagnating for people to feel like they can be different and to grow. Yeah, themselves it, it and to suppresses like individuality. Yeah, and like I feel like I, I mean I obviously haven't been to school for years, but I feel like just from what I see of like I don't know people who are still in school, I feel like people are allowed to be a bit more individual nowadays. Definitely nowadays, yeah, one hundred. Yeah, I, if you see people on like waiting for the bus and, and things, it just things. I don't know. Yeah, and yeah, because I know, like I know especially from like the Kent Parkour group, you know, <coughs> yeah. like TK and things. Yeah. I know he's not actually that much younger than us. He's not really. Yeah. But maybe that's a bad example. But I mean, yeah. though, a lot of the kids I see nowadays, even my brother's friends, to be honest, they seem to yeah. dress differently. Yeah. They kind of just don't give a fuck. We're just yeah. getting old. I know. Whereas, yeah, when we were at school, when it was I was like at school, man, it was brands. Like, you got to wear 
Yeah, Lacoste you've got to wear the brands, the Hermes belt, the Flossies, like you, you, everyone. Uh, what fucking no school offense. did you go to? <laughs> Jesus. Dude, no, I don't know. On man. my own clothes day, I would get rinsed for what I'd wear. Really? Cause, yeah, because I'd be wearing like baggy trackies and like a big Yeah, man, I get, I get rinsed on a clothes day. Well, yeah, you were the little people kid, weren't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah. like, and everyone was wearing skinny jeans or chinos, was a fucking massive craze. And it would yeah. all be really expensive shit that their parents bought them. Yeah. I'd be like, why? My, uh, my first girlfriend. I went shopping with her once and she bought me like, she was like, oh, because I used to just wear like, yeah, parkour clothing. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. I was exactly. like a sloppy kid. I was the one kid at school who fucking jumped about and everyone was like, do a backflip things. Yeah. And uh, she she was like, oh, you should buy that. And she, I got some chinos and I got some shoes <laughs> and I got like a like a kind of smarter shirt and like yeah. a jumper she thing. Did it for her. Yeah. Well, I was just like, yeah. And admittedly, I look pretty smart and things. Mm, and yeah. I then wore it on, because on some of the days a week, we were allowed to wear home clothes and other days we had to wear a suit. It was like a way of keeping the sixth form as like kind of, you know, looking smart, I guess. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I wore it on one of the home clothes days because it was like technically home clothes. Mm. But it was so fucking preppy and so unlike me that people legitimately thought I'd got confused and was wearing like <laughs> the smart clothes. Really? They were like, you know, it's not a suit day. And I was like, yeah, no, this is just what I'm wearing. And I never wore it again. <laughs> I was like, fuck that. So, so, con yeah. so confusing for you. It's so annoying, oh, bro. Fucking hell. I like be, I put it on in the morning and I was like, oh, I feel like it's not <laughs> you me. Feel good. It's like it's, it's not me, but I do feel good. Like <laughs> But it's like I with within like schools nowadays, I can definitely see that individuality is celebrated it's a bit huge. more. It's celebrated. Like people, I think it's almost, it's almost that culture of people taking the piss out of people for trying to be different and trying yeah, to be it's, an individual. It's, it's, it's dying out and you, you, good. you'll still see it. But I, I still see people from my school now still dressing the exact same way same here. that they dress yeah. on their own clothes days, but they were wearing the same clothes because mm. they still have that ingrained that, that I think it's a, they're a little bit afraid to go and step out of the norm mm. because of the experience they've had of school. When they had done that, they've been like ripped apart or roasted about it. And so, yeah. no, I, I see that it's too. developed like a fear in doing it, I think. It, and it's the certain, that's the, it's hard to kind of talk about it without judging them for wearing it. Cause they could genuinely like wearing what they wear. Yeah, man. But it's, yeah, the, but it's more, it's yeah, more the like the, the brand thing and like wearing certain labels and things. Yeah. A lot of people still do that. They would be like the same. You're talking about Lacoste tracks, aren't you? Yeah, or like just like a Nike all over tracksuit or something. I mean, that's not bad, but it just be if you're if you're wearing something that isn't a logo. Yeah, then it'd be weird. Like I, remember, I think I remember I got like some socks that were Adidas, and suddenly people were like, "Oh, nice socks!" Or something like that. <laughs> it's like what the fuck? Like they're the same socks, direct. but they have like Adidas on them now. Yeah, yeah, um, true. Anyway, but what you but said yeah. is what you said quickly there is so important. It's like. They they're gonna wear what they're gonna wear. Like, yeah, it's you, you know really, you feel comfortable in that. Yeah. You wear you wear whatever you want. I mean, there's no it, right way to what dress. You're fucking wearing <laughs> bowling shirt. <laughs> did, did you wear that? Did you wear bowling shirt? Bowling, yeah. bowling shirt. I, just, I, I, I did want to say because I I never knew that you were like the not the outcast, but it sounds like you were kind of the you he know was. the shy weird kid. Because yeah. now you're like the social butterfly. Well, that's the thing. In it sounds school, like you have completely I never, changed. I never realized I was. Well, I'm not. I'm not gonna try and like spit some light that spit some story and say like i was the kid like the out the outcast weird kid but i definitely definitely struggled to fit in i was still the same way i am now in school like really sort of like hello how are you doing blah 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 but people would just be like shut man you were ahead of your time basically is what you're mm -hmm. saying yeah like i was I, th I think i still was had pretty extroverted tendencies in school but yeah just from a very chaotic sort of mm -hmm. immature way it's so. weird because you said immature earlier and I kind of actually forgot because you, I mean, yeah, like I, I was in my 20s when I first met you. Like I think I was like 20, 21. That's crazy. And you oh, guys, fuck, that's I know, so weird. I know, that is so how weird. fucking that's mad. So weird. But you guys were 100% immature. Yeah. <laughs> like There's no denying it. Yeah. And it's weird because like, you kind of forget that because I know you two now as you were. But there were definitely times where I would have probably just been like, yeah, they're fucking immature. But mm -hmm. you were yeah, kids. So it's like, we're kids. It's like yeah, exactly. Like, it's the fact that in school, everyone who was young was trying to yeah. grow up and be more mature and like start having conversations and, you know, start having sex. They're trying to, they're trying to grow up. And, <laughs> no, but this is the thing. Yeah, man, sure. like, they're, trying to, they're trying to grow up and, and you know, they want ahead to of grow themselves, up. though, yeah. that, and I think that actually fucked people up. Yeah, because then they because, shun playfulness. They shun. Yeah. They shun being a kid, which is what you want. Which is what you know. You want to enjoy being. You want to enjoy that immaturity, that like lack of care and responsibility, and that chaotic energy of just like 
whoa, let's fucking go. But it's probably yeah. the most like crazy. I don't know. Ten years from I'd say like mm. twelve to twenty two maybe. You see, you could have two people who can kind of start off at the same level when they hit puberty, and then their mentality and like their their sort of um, experiences and yeah, every, it can change. That you can you can get people who become years ahead or mm. years behind it in terms of like life skills, experience, like confidence. Mm. So many things just dependent on what they either want to be interested in and what they get interested in, or even just the stuff that is around them. Because you meet mm. people from like, I don't know, other it, it you re, you get people who are more wrapped in cotton wool and like they don't have that confidence sometimes. And it's it's fucking and it can be so different between two people. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and, it, and no other point in your life, like I don't know, from thirty to forty. I guess like you could get somebody who's had a kid and somebody who hasn't and things like that, mm -hmm. but. I don't think you get as much change. Mm, yeah. And I think that's why you do get a lot of like weird separation between people like and friends and things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean that, that period in your life as well, just like 13 to 13 to 18 is just a ridiculous period in life. Like mm -hmm. everything changes. I mean, at, at least that's when puberty happens. And I feel like that level of fast change in not only how your brain works and how your body works. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, a lot of puberty talk in this one. I remember yeah. I remember you went through, in that stage, you went through like, I don't know if it would if it would be depression, but you were just kind of struggling mentally. And I remember being that young and just not understanding it at all. And I think yeah. you were the first friend that I had that started struggling with something like that. And I was the one to be like, well, why can't you just be happy? Yeah, I yeah. fucking did not get it when I was a yeah, kid. Yeah, which younger. is so well, like shit. People who were sad, you were like, well, yeah. Sad. Yeah, I had, I had a mate who got severely depressed and I was literally just like, I could not comprehend it. And then it happened yeah. to me and I was like, oh. Mm. Like, yeah, that's an oh, interesting Like, one. oh, you just feel sad. <laughs> but did you understand what was going it's on or was it just a lot of pressure when i think things? about it i enjoyed being sad like mm -hmm. oh it's, it's such a it's such a weird thing do you know what i mean you how can they, enjoy you sort of enjoy you, melancholy you sort of enjoy being like the victim in a weird way yeah i think it's the what is it oh, no i was saying you you can do that yeah you can well it's definitely you're definitely able to wallow yeah it's, yeah. it's the wallowing and i think it's the self like de i always say de it's deprecation not depreciation uh, yeah deprecation mm -hmm. deprivate yeah, it's it's the like oh, no. you feel like shit about yourself, so you kind of beat yourself up for feeling like that, which yeah. then in turn makes you feel worse. But at least the thing I've realized that at least you're then like in your own head, you're in control of those thoughts. Mm. So you're like, oh well, I'm just shit, and it's like, and you're you're confirming that to yourself. So and then you are that. Mm. So you're just kind of in this cycle that kind of doesn't feel good, but you feel at least like you're like a bit in control of your emotions. You're just yeah. like, well, I'm a piece of shit. Like, fuck it, I deserve mm. that. Da, 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 yeah. da. Whereas yeah. the hardest thing to do is actually then have self-worth and be like... Well, it's a, it, I think it's that. an attention thing as well. Like, you start being like, oh, I'm sad and I want people to notice me being sad. You start listening to sad music and like just being in that <laughs> melancholic state and you're like, oh, I'm a sad person. Like, you know, like, like Billie Eilish, like she makes... Like she started making music when she's like 14. Like, that, that music is depressing. Do you know what I mean? I love her music. I think she's great. But like, it's so sad. And I think there's a there's a thing with kids of discovering sadness and like quite enjoying it. Do you know what I, I mean? Think and enjoying the attention that it brings that's and a the, problem. the powerfulness of that emotion of being like, oh, I'm, I'm sad. And Yeah, I'm I think a lot of people see all. sad as an aesthetic now. Which yeah, is really weird. Sad boy, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, sad I've boy. seen people have that in their bios. Yeah, sad yeah, yeah. Boy. I'm a sad, sad boy. boy. Like, I mean, but it's it's okay to accept like all of that sort of stuff, but when it's more of an aesthetic thing and I guess it kind of follows with emo stuff and whatever, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. But it And I listen to sad music even when I'm happy. I like it. Yeah. yeah I love sad no, but you can like that, but it's more music. just like people can promote it as an aesthetic when it's kind of you're going to forget about the people who actually struggle with that sort yeah, of shit. Yeah, there's, there's, there's definitely two yes. levels to it, I think. Mm -hmm. You can get the, the real darkness and then you get the like Yeah mopey dark because it's not it's not a pretty thing no yeah. and this is a really this was meant to be a silly podcast <laughs> we were eating at the start we were eating at the start. <laughs> what's happening guys yeah mm -hmm. but yeah yeah well i think well, sorry to sorry to get, get darker guys but, <laughs> but um i think it's that thing of like when you grow up and and go back going back to puberty you start to like come into yourself and the start realizing P. the world around you and it's like you start to realize oh shit like this is actually <laughs> fucked up like the world's actually a really 
that's when you start to realize the parts of the world that you're like, this is awful. Like you never looked at it this way before. And you start, yeah, you start getting that, that those sorts of feelings of like, oh, the world's shit and everything's mm -hmm. shit and, and being a little bit nihilistic. And I think that's what leads into that sort of, no sort of depressive stuff. Wow, those depressive states. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I, well, uh, I, I, I was just going to say, there is, I think nihilism is the thing, isn't it? Because it's just like, well, fucking nothing matters. And then yeah. and you, that's how you like, you could almost like wallow in that because you're just like, nothing fucking matters. Well, nihilism anyway. <laughs> can breed like two things. It's either you're going to like, you, you're going to take that approach and be like, nothing matters. Like, yeah, yeah, like, yeah I'm yeah, going to yeah, go yeah. And, like, do whatever I want. Or you could be like, nothing matters. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, there's two ways you can go. Mm -hmm. I, I find like that. one day I go one way, the other way I go the other way. Yeah. So, you know, you just keep it, keep a nurse balance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, Sometimes yeah, I flip every hour. It's great. Yeah, <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> I don't know why I thought of this, but just while you were saying about when you're like growing up and learning about just the world being a bit too much, um, you talk a lot about like social constructs and things. I feel like you're a big person on understanding, like a talk that we a lot of the time have, like if we're in a social dynamic or if we just meet like a new person, yeah. we'll end up having like a chat about like just how things were socially or yeah. like mannerisms and- Right, right, right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you, and when we did the interview for Summer of Love, which Sam is helping with, um, but yeah, you, your interview a lot of the time was talking. You were the only one who spoke about like getting used to people and things. I've just right, liked to mention you uh, just gave the name away there. Oh shit! But that's not an issue. Like you know, podcast always gets exclusive. Yeah, yeah it's not. Uh, is it? Is, it's not really. That's, we, we, it's like an internal it name. Is summer yeah, of love. it is summer. Of well, life. internally we just referred to the trip as summer of love because the idea was that you guys would go and have a lovely trip in the summer. Yeah, and then we were like, it's kind of a weird name. But that's the, the dangerous thing about naming. So sorry, that's the dangerous thing about naming something. Yeah, I think. It's, you but you've got to name a what? It's like you have to name a WhatsApp group. So you're like, uh, and I just kept when we were talking about it, I kept referring it to it as summer of love because I was like, it needs to just be. Mm a happy trip and then it's it annoyed yeah because it's stuck it's stuck when we but were like it's gonna change but it's stuck so much now that i like it but i yeah, like soul like because soul sounds like it's yeah. spanish for sun yeah and like it but it's is, also like it's and also, it's the abbreviator yeah. the a little, that to someone yeah. i love it's yeah. the, the thing uh -huh. the sol here yeah, yeah. So. it's also like this is a mic and it's like, it's being called a mic and I'm not going to be like, we need a better name for the mic. It's like, <laughs> it's, we've named Summer of Love now and it's there in my mind as Summer of Love. It's like it's banana. I always free and Rucksack. Rucksack is the one that freaks me out. <laughs> what? Rucksack. Rucksack. Yeah. What the I, fuck is that? Yeah, I don't know what a ruck. A what rucksack? is a ruck? Yeah. Boggy. You don't want to Boggy. Be, <laughs> You <to> ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who knows? You'd know. Ah, uh, but it maybe comes from the old German... Uh, yeah, he's got no it's idea. Rock, yeah. It's rocking. What is right? rock? I don't know what rocking is that? Should happen. I know. Are you gonna go into the Latin? Rocking sounds like the type of thing you do on the weekend, <laughs> like <laughs> hiking up, rockers. hiking up mountains. Rocking is a rocker. Oh right, yes. That's oh right, yes. <laughs> <laughs> So you, oh, you missed it yesterday, evil. right? That we were was looking so for, bad. We were looking for the parkour park, and there was like this fence, and it was next, it's next to a school, and there was like a teacher or something inside yeah. this fence. We didn't know if the parkour park was like part of the school grounds. Right. And uh, Bloggy has, you know, I've got quite a posh accent. I'd say we've we've all got we're fairly all bloody posh. But yeah. Bloggy has like the he has the potential to take it. I would say to the next level, <laughs> to, to, Too far. to places where no one could afford it. I literally it could go. said, "Oh, excuse me, sir." And as soon as I did that, I was just but like, very, hands in my face, and I was like, what "Very loudly, hands? very sort of." He said a good posture, and he went, "Excuse me, sir," like that. <laughs> and as he said it, he went, "Excuse me, sir." Oh God, <laughs> what have I done? He immediately stopped it and was like, uh, "What have I just said?" Oh man, you came back from asking asking some people for a cigarette the other day, and you were just like, "Why did I? Why did I do?" That's so poshly. Oh, I don't, I don't suppose me. you have excuse some. I don't suppose you have some tobacco leaf for me, <laughs> darling. It's because you're trying to be like non threatening. Yeah, I just don't want to come across like, comes Yo, what's up? Can I have some rat? Well, that's, that's, you, that's actually how you've got to do it. You've got to go up to like someone on the street smoking a cigarette and be like, oh, I'm dying for a ciggy, man. Because that'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah, you have to relate with the ciggy. You've got to relate with like yeah. that sort of energy. <laughs> oh, I need a, See? I need Social a constructs. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry. Good. Okay. Good. Uh, fucking the reason, the reason I segue. made the reason I made that face is because Alex Morton was taking the piss out of me earlier for basically. I read this book called Sapiens. Yeah, as that's why. Did that, you actually heard about Sapiens? Did you ever actually read it? I just saw you carrying it all the time. Yeah, I tend to do that. It's like a. You're a book guy. You're a, you're a like I'm a. Like, Look at me. Got a book. Yeah, <laughs> under your arm. Things like that. 
<laughs> but I read this book and it basically, I'm very new to reading. I only started reading like two years ago. I didn't do it when I was a kid, which I really, really regret. I'm assuming you mean like reading books and not just like, you know, <coughs> no, a word on a piece of no, paper. No, I knew, I knew how to read. Yeah, I yeah. just, I never got into picking up like a fictional book like yeah. you do as a kid and yeah. then reading it. So I only started two years ago. And so... I, I, I really enjoy it now. But then Sapiens was like my first sort of fictional, no, a non-fictional book that I ever read. It's a very proper it's, book. It's yeah. a very, well, it was big for, for like someone starting out reading. I was like, this, how do people it's do a lot. this? <laughs> I'm like, this is crazy. But that opened my mind. Like it was, and, and I know a lot of people, but I'm like, oh, whatever. And I'm like, <laughs> I got have you read, you know, but um, no, yeah, it just did. And like, I'll be honest, like it really did open my mind to a lot of stuff. And then Alex Morton takes the piss out of me because whenever I quote Sapiens, he said, are you going to go and quote Sapiens on the podcast? And here we are talking about it. <laughs> and I said to him, I said, one of the things I'll bring up just for you on the podcast is social constructs. Really? And you did it. And that's why I went, <laughs> no <laughs> way. And now I'm going to snip this and put it on Instagram so that he can see it. <laughs> Tag that, him. There's You're a winning. spider. I saw that earlier. Oh, wow. Oh, that's cool. Dangling. Someone eat it. You used to be scared of spiders, didn't you, Kim? Not small ones. Small ones are right. day to eat it. That'd be Big cool. ones I don't Go like. On. See if oh, it's coming up to you. Anything to Quick, say eat to the it podcast. Bef- no, I'm going to give him a... See if he's got anything to say to the Hello, podcast. Hello, mate. You're really... I fucking love flies, me. <laughs> Too small for a I fly. I like goblin flies. Probably nope. eats like dust. Imagine if he bit me and killed me. He's on the mic. He'll be Spider-Man. Um, um, mate. Sorry, that was just... The obvious. next Spider-Man, Giles Longley. Camp- Campbell Longley. Longley. Campbell Longley. Unfortunately. Campbell Longley, yeah. Um, go on, let's carry yeah, so, on with some social yeah. constructs. Oh, no, I, I, oh, we're still on this, all right. Well, no, I just want to... <laughs> still here. Still on social I just want to know why you think about it so much, because I haven't asked why, and, yeah. like, what what you... Yeah, just yeah. talk about it, because I, I... Yeah, you think about it a lot. Yeah, I mean, if you were, we're talking about the Motors tour and picking up on, on those things, I definitely... I've definitely found that since since like uh, opening my mind and, and reading a bit more and like looking at those sorts of ideas like social constructs or whatever or other things or just people's interactions and behaviors with each other. Yeah, it was interesting on the tour. When, once you start thinking about that stuff and the things you pick up on, like mm-hmm. for example, on the on Summer of Love, uh, just within the first day of realizing that everyone's sort of very energetic and ready to socialize and talk and it, it's, it's sort of getting used to that and mm-hmm. yeah and everyone's very different especially when yeah, I think that's which we pick different. up on quite a lot that is the thing that you is I, I hadn't really thought about this but i'm just thinking about it now it's definitely something i would say i don't know if i'm sitting in a room with you know keelan and bloggy and travis or something mm. i don't think we'd start talking about someone's like mannerisms or something but mm. you do seem to pick up on like kind of like you you dig deeper into after a situation has passed you normally find a topic of conversation that's quite interesting around something right it does well, make like me I've analyzing just realized, everything yeah and I've, I've just realized it makes me a bit nervous to now like leave you because you'll probably be like have you noticed how Giles does this like, fuck but you d- I, he'll do it you'll do it to me as well like well, when I, I say something up. you're like there's a bit of truth in that isn't there or like you're, you're actually pissed well, off but you're I masking think- it or something like that and I'm like oh <laughs> Get out of my head! Yeah. I think I think analyzing social situations is so fun. Like I did, I do it a lot with some of my friends when after we go to a party or something like that, or just go to a social event. The funnest part of it sometimes is just talking about the experience afterwards and like how people's behaviors were and mannerisms towards someone. And yeah, it's it's, it's crazy because social interactions are just really amazing things to sort of observe, like in the moment, mm-hmm. being actually present of the fact you're in a social situation and like thinking about how a person is reacting to you and how you're reacting to them. It's just interesting. And especially when you do, you do things and your friend tells you about things that you did in the social, yeah. like the social situation. Most of the time you never realize you did it. You're yeah, like, yeah, really? Yeah. That's how that came across? Or yeah. mm-hmm. I didn't notice that. And yeah, it's just, I just find it interesting to analyze, but it can also be really not beneficial as well, because then you can just overthink everything and mm-hmm. look into oh, things too oh, deeply. And- see, I've now just realized, so I would like to point out, uh, Joseph Marks, when you watch this, because I know you'll sit and watch this th- whole thing. <laughs> he called me out for saying like too much on, the, oh, on yeah. the last podcast. And he was like, you need to stop saying it. And have I was I like- been saying, Have I been saying like? No, but I probably have. But once you, those filler words are so hard to remove because you 
and I said, fuck, I've just realized this. I said, next podcast, I'm not going to say it. And if I get through a whole podcast without saying it, without intention, yeah. he has to regrow his hair. But I've probably, <sighs> I've probably already messed it up. You have. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I have. But have, it's, yeah. it's one of those things that once you become aware of it, it's, you can't just stop because you, I'm mm. now thinking as I'm speaking to try yeah, and not say something. you're going to be tripping yourself up like over and then it's not, how you it's speak. It's kind of disgenuine because you're like, <laughs> I just yeah. said it then. It's kind of like, like. Yeah, yeah, it's hard to, it's hard yeah. to deal with. Um, I, I, had, I, have, I have an image of you. In a in a bougie coffee shop in Shoreditch. <laughs> oh yeah, wearing a East scarf. London life. Yeah, a scarf and like a nice. That's shirt. not even a joke. That's exactly what he does. No, no, mm. with with a copy of Sapiens, and it'll <laughs> it'll it'll battle through like two pages and be like <laughs> battle through. <laughs> like, sweat <laughs> sweat coming it, down. It's a battle. That's man. a bit tiring. And he'll put the book down. Like he'll he'll read a, a bit that interests him. Put the put the book down. And then sit there and just analyze people for like forty five minutes. <laughs> sip a sip a fucking. Uh, but, but do you guys think you're empathetic? Like, can you, do you feel like you can pick up on people's feelings just from like, in a, like say you're in a circle, uh, can you pick up on if someone's feeling nervous or scared or confident or happy or like, can, can you pick up on that stuff? I think I would, yeah, I, yeah, I think, I think I would like to say I'm half decent. I think because I've sort of, uh, I don't think I'm, I think I'm fairly confident in most social situations, but I'm definitely not the most. And I've had a lot of like anxiety and things. Mm. And I know that a lot of people are like, I think I can tell if somebody is not feeling great yeah. from mannerisms and speaking of things. So, cause some people are pretty good at masking it. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah some yeah. people in a social situation and most of the time you're not noticing either. Like, I can't help but pick up like, uh, I can't help but notice the person who hasn't said anything for a little bit and just like, really? just like sort of notice them not saying <laughs> fucking anything. Fucking glare at them. Yeah, no, I don't glare at them. I just like- Say something. I, I can't help but try and bring, like want to try and nudge them in. Yeah. It's, a, it's like a, it's a weird thing. It comes from going to church. It comes from like m my dad who's like a pastor of a church basically saying to me like, oh, when new people come in, like, make them feel welcome and yeah, yeah. like accommodate to them and make make church feel like a home, like a hospitable environment. So even now, which pisses me off because sometimes I want to go to a social situation and just be like, have a good time. But I can't help them pick up on people who maybe seem a little bit like they can't really get involved or mm -hmm. they don't know how to and just kind of go over there and try and make them feel that's comfortable kinda, so they can come in. That's like, if I'm just thinking of like, I don't know, a situation, if I was like having kind of, you know, borderline anxiety attack, yeah. Like sitting in the corner, I've said like so many times just then. If I'm if I'm if I'm sort of at, a, at an do event, do you have anxiety? <laughs> no, but if I'm at an event and I was feeling a bit like pranged yeah. and kind of not wanting to, what Spider, you... spiders on the mic. Spiders been on the mic the whole time. I fucking love I flies. It. Like, it's literally crawling up round oh, yeah. around the top. Carry he's on. on. He's, he's, he's your mate. He's Cecil. He's your mate. Um, if you came over to me and like kind of tried to almost nudge me in I'd probably then freak out even more because I'd be like no I don't I really don't want to be here oh, no, that's <laughs> an interesting thing it's like it's like that can be some, some people don't want to be nudged in but yeah. it's also that what yeah that term sort of nudging in it's more like I wouldn't be like in the middle oh, I'm saying like no it wouldn't be the case of like if we're in a social dynamic and we we're talking about like, what do you think yeah do you know what I mean they'd just be like put on the spot like I'd probably I'd probably move away from the conversation I'm having here and just sort of like move myself next to them and just be like Oh yeah, and start a conversation with them. Probably speak about just puberty. so then they have a like they have a friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> probably talk about, talk about puberty. Or so yeah, probably talk about puberty yeah. or sapiens so, yeah. or social yeah. constructs. <laughs> like, this guy's chatting so much <laughs> shit. Like, I'm going that, home. That's interesting. You said about the church thing because that was your kind of role in church for a bit, wasn't it? Because you you said that about yeah. church welcoming people, but you didn't actually mention that you were the one who did that. Your dad. Right. Were, Wait, were you a greeter? Right. Well, you, or like, there's or like, for the most you can part, go on right? the hosting team, which is like you stand on the door and like, like the people at Walmart people. and they're like, hey, welcome to Walmart. Yeah, kind that. of. But it was also, <laughs> I was like a pastor's kid. So my dad was like the leader of the church. And so he the would leader. be the, the leader. He would be the guy who would be up on the stage, like preaching to the congregation. So if you got new people coming in, my dad would probably notice that there's new people. They would have a conversation and then he'd be like, have you met my son, Sam or... Or even if there was just new people, we'd be like, oh, have you come and said hello to them? Yeah, even if I wasn't hosting, it would mm -hmm. just be a thing of like, go over and introduce yourself and see if you can make them feel welcome. Your church was very alternative, I will say. In yeah. a good way. In a good way, yeah. It's yeah, live, live band. Live band. Much. Right, it's a free gig yeah, every single, free gig every single Sunday. Sunday like, morning, get up and fucking great people start well. moshing. It's great. Yeah. Yeah. All of my, basically, if I, I say this, people are like, how do you get into like film or something creative? I'm like, join a church. Because- Well, it's like Zach, Zach Lauer. Yeah. You know, do you know Zach from Brighton? No. 
Um, very, very talented filmmaker from from Brighton. He he did the um, what does he call it? Daily snippet. Mm. You know when I was doing like hundred day, I posted a little video every day. This a few years ago on Instagram. Like I made a little video. And I, I, I can't remember what I called it, but I only got to a hundred. He right. did it for a year consistently and like killed it. And has done like, he's incredibly talented filmmaker basically. And he runs a production company, but I know, I don't know him that well. I've only met him a few times, but I know he is very religious and, and mm. has this like whole church kind of, this spider's just going mad. <laughs> um, uh, like network. And a yeah. lot of his film work has kind of originated from that place. Yeah, man. So. I mean, it's great, but I've definitely found if you want to find work, in some sort of like creative sector or freelancing or something like that. Church is just essentially, if I say join a church, what I'm really saying is just like join a community of people that like you can easily talk to or you can just meet different, because church is like, there's a very diverse and they've got branch money. of people. And a lot, well, yeah, that's the funny thing as well. Like you meet a lot of quite successful people. Like there's, oh, it's crazy the diversity in churches. You can have like very sort of, and this is, you can have people who are maybe, uh, less sort of like financially stable and in like a bit of a tougher spot or not doing so well. And then you can have like the complete opposite of people who are like really confident and quite successful mm. and different ages, different ethnicities, like different everything. It mm. can really span across. And so I was able to, because of that, I was able to meet like people who actually worked in the industry I wanted to go into who were nice enough and knew me enough and were like, yeah, come on, come on a shoot or mm -hmm. come do this. And then that's how we got into it. So. We're, talk, we're talking about the church and we've got pentagrams on our glasses. <laughs> yeah. But that's all right because <laughs> Sam's is, fine. Because Sam is, what are you? Yeah, what are, are you agnostic? So, is that the right word? It's a logo of a brand I would like to point out. Yeah. It's not <laughs> like we're uh, just straight up <laughs> David Star Satan worshipping here. Like, um, I, wouldn't oh, put it against, I wouldn't put it against you two though. <laughs> like, I've listened to the music you like and it's... None of it worships Satan. Oh. Mm. <laughs> I, 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 hope, I hope not. I don't think yeah. So. Um, yeah, like what you because what 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 is my surely you had to have the talk on, with your dad. Yeah, like no, not. Well, he said more. he said this to me the other day because I'm not I'm like openly open with my family about the fact that I'm not practicing religiously. Yeah, but he was like, oh, you know, it's a bit of a shame you don't have the faith you used to because when I was a kid growing up, like I had a faith, like I believed in God and I was I was really into it, and then of recent. I don't have that, but he, yeah, he was like, yeah, I don't feel like you have the faith that you used to. And I was like, I actually argue that I'm more, I'm, I'm more religious than I ever was before because I'm actually making a like a decision and a conscious choice to look into it and to try and understand it and grasp it and like be interested in it. Like I, it's not the sort of story where it's like, oh, I, I grew up religious and now I'm not interested in it. And mm -hmm. like religion shaped me as a person. And I'm so curious about it and interested in it and. Yeah, it's just bloody interesting. Well, I think we were saying yesterday there's there's a huge like muddying between religion and then spirituality right. and the kind of like the where it's it's quite blurry in terms of like beliefs and and lots of different things there. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, one hundred percent. Yeah, I mean, spirituality is an amazing word because well, it's it's so fucking broad. It's, mm -hmm. Spirituality, it's like it could be anything as abstract as as crazy as as, as anything. It's like whatever. Yeah, it's, it's, and it's massive. But then religion comes with things like dogma and uh, like ideologies about how to live and act in, act in the world. Uh, you know, then that comes with the philosophy as well. But yeah, with spirituality, it's, it's completely separate. Like, I feel mm -hmm. like I have like a, I'm not religious, but I'm definitely like trying to be spiritual. That's the thing I think I find a lot with people I knew growing up who were, I think it's the same thing. You grow up in a religious family and you don't really have a choice and then you get a bit more mature and you start discovering things for yourself and that mm. choice then sort of you either you either completely abstain from it or you kind of widen your view and i think i think like i mean christianity is is declining hugely in the uk and other countries and i think yeah. it's not necessarily declining because everyone is going ah it's all fucking bullshit but i think a mm -hmm. lot of people are going well let's broaden things and just think about mm. stuff on a little bit more of like a spiritual yeah. sort of basis rather than like the bible I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, spirituality is definitely, I feel like it's growing, becoming, becoming far more of like a hot topic. Uh, it's just, it's, it's the thing about the Bible is that it's not, there's, okay, this is how my, oh God, we're getting into the religion. Yeah, chat. this was meant to be a fun. <laughs> this is meant to be fun, guys, talking about religion. 
I'm not checking the time to be rude. Okay, I was just. Cool. I thought you were. No, we got the orders to do, so I was just making sure. Um, no, basically, my dad uh, refers to the Bible in terms of its relevance. Is like there are things that were written when it was like it was relevant socially and ethically when the Bible was written at that time, yeah. depending on what when it was like transcribed into whatever text. Um, and then there are things that are like first principle, which were relevant when the Bible was written and are still relevant now. Mm -hmm. But I think socially and ethically, a lot of what the Bible says is losing a lot of relevance now. There's a lot of mental shit in the Bible. A lot of weird... A lot of crazy shit. Yeah. But also, mm -hmm. just like in the world we live in now, like lines are being blurred. Cr like so many things are changing very quickly. New ideologies of, of how we think are changing rapidly. And so... There's a going to be there's a, this crazy period where we're like, where does the Bible, where does religion fit into all of this? Mm -hmm. Which is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. That is mad. And your dad has to think about all that, or he doesn't. Oh, it's crazy. <laughs> I asked my dad, I'm like, what do you think about the climate change? What do you think about you know all of these topics? Where does where where does the church like stand on this? What should the church do? And it's like, man, he's he's just like, yeah, man, there's got to be a point where you just try like, yeah, it's. It's it's, it's a really complex yeah. time. Do you just carry on just doing? Just try church. to be a good person. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I'm going to bring it back to parkour. Back yeah. to puberty. <laughs> back, back to puberty. <laughs> I'm going to bring it back to puberty. <laughs> bring it back to puberty, um, bro. Well, just real quick, because I want to talk about Broomen a bit, because mm. on this podcast, I don't Good think we've really... No. Like, not a huge amount. Not don't, properly yeah. dove dove into? Dived. Not properly dove, dove, dove your toe into. into. <laughs> we just haven't gone into the details of it. But before, before I go into that, because we were talking about, like, part, growing up with parkour. Yeah. I remember for a while, and I think... We know it's growing pains, but you had terrible knees. Yeah, man. For ages, my knees were like, and that's so yeah, savage because hell. when we were progressing with parkour, yeah, it really put. When Keelan back. was becoming Keelan Ryan, I yeah. was stuck with <laughs> really awful knees and just like, yeah. Just like my anything. world is pain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. which Suffering. was savage. It was savage, but we thought maybe tendonitis or something like that. But it was yeah. actually growing pains, I think, because right. of your. <laughs> length that was such a buzzword in parkour wasn't it oh, i got tendonitis yeah i was like my knees hurt i've got tendonitis but no it's got bad knees but yeah mm -hmm. but that was that was the that was my body being like mm -hmm. just <laughs> yeah you know what i mean it's like those great there was a wings. period where like it felt like every time sort of i remember like just sarah being like every time i see sam he's getting taller yo this pisses me off because people People say it to me every time they see me. They're like, are you getting tall? I'm like, no, you just forgot. You just forgot that I'm tall. <laughs> like, leave me alone. Oh, it is weird, right? Because if you, like, I'm 5'8", so I'm, like, not, I'm small, but I'm not small, small. Mm. But if you went up to somebody, I don't know, who's, like, small, small, and you're like, oh, you're small, you're small, like, every day, they'd be like, oh, yeah, it's really mean. Mm -hmm. But we do it to you. Well, I try not to do it to you anymore, <laughs> but, like, it comes up because you are tall. Yeah. But it's, like, it's... I think it's because you don't see it as, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but when you think small, yeah. it's like to bring that up is like, well, that, that's kind of mean. Yeah. But they don't think about tall because you think, oh, if they're taller, they're like, I don't know, maybe stronger, ingrained in our yeah. brain. Yeah. Like, well, that's actually a but bonus. What, what we're yeah. doing is- It comes with its difficulties. And we're still just going, physical trait. Yeah, no, <laughs> like, exactly. Physical trait. Physical trait. But yeah, like, something you can't yeah. change. Like, yeah, no, exactly. Like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but you've, like, it's- <laughs> It's not all positive being tall, is it? No, it comes. It comes with your its jumps look tiny. Yeah, <laughs> it comes with its. It's got its pros and it's got its cons. Yeah. and you know, like people, like I used to say, oh, it's sick for gigs because you can see the other, you can see everything. But then it's also like, no, it's not sick for gigs because I'm standing behind you, being like, look at this prick. Yeah, because like. because you just feel bad, and then like it was that igloo go. So I actually just like I I couldn't I didn't want to stand up. He because was kneeling felt, at the front. Like if I'm feeling he's just actually yeah. on his knees, like wow. Wow. if I'm feeling shy, if I'm having a shy day, yeah. being tall does not help because no. you're just there and everyone's just like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's uh, pros and cons, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where did you want to delve in with Broom? I'm really, I'm really curious because, about well, where you wanted to jump in with that. I mean, we mentioned that Broom and when we met the guys, they were Guildford Park or whatever before, and they had the Broom and Channel, and that was. Who was it at that time? That was Ricky, Nye, Aiden was probably involved. Yeah, yeah he was. Yeah. And Hector yeah. and Seb. Oh, it, was, yeah. it was kind of all of them. That was everyone, yeah. A apart from us. And we met them in London. And that was kind of, yeah, like we said, that was when we started actually doing more like jump-based things. Yeah. And we were kind of just getting into that. Um, but it was really, really spontaneous because we kind of met them, even though we'd met a few people in London before. But we started like just, well, we were just with them for the whole day. Well, it and was, then in yeah. that, that time, we just kept in contact. And then we started going to Guildford and things, which is our first like yeah. 
trip to not somewhere that's London, not London, yeah, yeah, which it is was, kind of scary. It was nigh, man. He was, um, he was, he was a bit of like a, a leader in that time. He was like, okay, everyone's going to meet up in Seven Oaks, and we're all going to come down, and then everyone's going to meet up in Bournemouth, and then, mm-hmm. and I feel like he really led us coming together as a group by just organizing a few days out with that specific group of people mm-hmm. where we all came today, which. which, which is how we all sort of came together. I think. It's true. He was he was very much like we're doing this. You and do everyone... need, I think, someone because it's so mm. easy for a group of people just to be it's a bit loose and like. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, we, got, kinda... we definitely Bruman was loose. Like, if you think about, yeah, Bruman. you need that person so, to be like, this is happening. Yeah, yeah, but it's weird how like not that we would question it, but you get those leaders where you're like, you kind of not jealous of them, but yeah, you know what I mean, it's like why can... is he leading? But no one questioned it because he was so even with everything. Well, do you know what I mean, just, he was so he... kind of he understood like okay, this guy thinks this or this guy thinks that or like we need to all think together and he, he, yeah, everyone was he, equal. He was a natural leader to the point where you just don't notice that he's leading you. Of course, You're like, yeah. oh, I'm in Bruman now. How did that happen? No. <laughs> yeah. Was that you? Like you never question it. Because like, we had like a Skype call as well when we were like figuring out. Like, yeah. Because they all said though, like if you're in it, you're 100% in it. And they even said, because we used to make YouTube videos on our own channels. Yeah. And they were like, kind of politely asking could you not do that and put effort into Bruman? yeah yeah which is kind of what we've like with motus we talk about like the 100 percent effort into the group rather than yourself mm. yeah which yeah, star yeah. also touched on in that video with max ward yeah yeah did and we i mention, think that's i don't know if we did we mention that on the last podcast maybe because if know. not max ward has basically released a really good series of videos about parkour films and you should go and check it out mm. it's very good yeah but yeah i i, I fully agree with with that putting mm. in effort into a group into like a entity yeah, yeah it it's, like, it's like what do you want to it becomes wanna, bigger than you yeah mm. that's the thing yeah it's like do you want to be a solo athlete and like move like that's how you that's the avenue you want to go down with parkour or do you want to start a collective or do you it's, it's where you want to go it's trying to look forward with that mm. and then that's why i think starting something like a team or a brand or yeah, mm, yeah. a collective a parkour collective is what what a group you would want to put effort into it what a group of people to start hanging around at our age as well. Because they're all older. <laughs> they're yeah, older, only, yeah. but, but still closer to our age, But because they were just old yeah. enough where they were doing a lot of things that is just new to us. Yeah. That were kind of sketchy and crazy, like brute yeah. missions and partying and all this, which I'd never done before. It was crazy. <laughs> Going back to school, it was like, bro, my parkour friends were so much cooler than my yeah, school friends. Yeah, I know. Friends. It was always and the worst. Like, so, some, boast, of my, right? some of my school friends are absolute legends, and I still talk to you now, and you know who that is, but... Um, <laughs> like they're gonna be watching it. They might. <laughs> they might. They might. Yeah, like, another they another bit to sniff and put on Instagram. Let, let's see your name. <laughs> let's see it. Let, let's see. Let's see your name. No, they'll see. They might see your name and be like, "Oh, podcast or Sam." Yeah, um, sure. that. But it's true. Like I, when I was at school, it was I like come back from a trip to London or whatever, and you're just like, everyone's fucking lame. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you love your friends, but you're like, it's just they do the same shit, and it's like. We did all this crazy shit, and then the police came, and yeah, people yeah. wouldn't believe it in school, man. Like yeah. I, would go, I would go out to Guildford and have like the sickest time out partying, meeting all these older cool people, like this, like doing crazy roof missions, adventuring. And I'd come back on a school day and be like ready to go, and I'd be like, "This happened," and people would be like, oh, "All right, mate." Yeah. You know what I mean, I'd show them the YouTube videos, and they'd just be like, He's "Watching parkour again." <laughs> like, no, this is me. Look at this. <laughs> Look at what I did on the weekend. I'm wow. doing windmills on IMAX block. <laughs> It was definitely a much um, easier time for police, though, like police encounters. I even right. though, like, a lot of the Bruman guys oh, can sometimes get, like, a bit wild and... Easier in terms of dealing with them. Yeah, or... I think so. Like, well, we'd we're always also... just get let off with, like... Well, I think because you're kids. So like, like, yeah. Yes, that is a big thing, actually. As you get older, it's like, why is there a 20-year-old man on a roof? Like, yeah. is he doing yeah. parkour or is he just, you know... Yeah, well, being a man. It's actually better now because like when you're a kid, you're on the roof and then the police come, they're, they're like ready, guns blazing, and then they see a kid and they're like, what are you? and then they're like, it's a kid, what are you doing up there? And they're like, rah, 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 and they give you the pep, the lecture, yeah, yeah, the yeah. parkour lecture. You know, it's just <laughs> but then, but then well, now I'm older, I'm on a roof and the police come, guns blazing. I'm just like, hi, yeah, how you doing? And they're like, oh, what's this? grown man like just this big grown man on a roof why is he talking to me so diplomatically get down from the roof they don't give you the pep talk anymore but they're sort of just like if you get one that isn't it's only if you get the bad eggs then it's always Mm. hard to get out of but yeah if you can if you can go into it politely then it's generally right Mm. i like how you said guns blazing twice I say guns blazing twice. But it's just getting <laughs> we, hope, psychoanalyzing. Hopefully they haven't got fucking guns in England. Oh yeah. yeah. Unless you unless you've got mm-hmm. a gun. I did mm-hmm. get overtaken on the way here actually by two 
undercover police cars driving insanely fast on the yeah, way they into do the go town. fast like just like <laughs> and I was like what the fuck I thought Sainsbury was getting robbed again but <laughs> they weren't there did so. it get robbed I think the other day well, you yeah because it was closed off wasn't it really? there were like six police cars outside. and a helicopter yeah a helicopter mm. circling around so yeah. stay blessed <laughs> but yeah um, what, what um, I mean yeah what, Bruman what? was quite strong for a while mm. What was your... Uh, Enter Giles. Enter Giles. <laughs> Giles basically broke it apart. No. That was honestly that's such a tough... That was hard. ...whole few years. It's and, so and not interesting to be here now after there was... Because I remember... Mate, uh, people fucking... People used to call me a paedophile because I sponsored young yeah, people. Yeah, man. It was... It's like... And really I, feel, I feel really... I actually look back on those years and I'm like, come on, it's because we were young and we didn't know how to mm-hmm. deal with anything. And we had, I definitely, there was a difficult relationship between yeah, the yeah, members yeah. of Brewman and, and yourself. Well, the and hardest thing was, is like, I obviously met you guys prior to Brewman yeah. at NDGA. And then as I, and I started, Mo, like Mois became sort of an embryo and then became a thing. And I remember saying to Keelan, like, oh, I'll sponsor you. I think this was at the period where your knees are starting getting bad. Yeah, and <laughs> I, was, I was always like, this feels a bit mean. Yeah. But I said to Keelan, like, oh, when, like, eventually I'll, you'll be one of the first people. And then I brought on Marks and I was like giving free shit to you. Mm. And, then, and then, then it was like pretty much at exactly the same time. No, it spider. was because I was actually already in my head, a motor's athlete. And you as, were like then bigging up Max and Luke. Yeah. And I kind of like, cause they obviously, they, they weren't from Guildford, they were Bournemouth. Yeah. And they kind of came into the Broom and Fold. So I like mm. took them and it all felt like it kind of happened. It was very similar time. S- similar time. Max and Luke was the only ones where they were already in Brooman, but only just, it was yeah. so new. But for me, it was like, I'm a motor's athlete. And because it was very much a sponsorship. And now we've got a team, which is Brooman. Mm. So it never crossed my mind that it would create any sort of like... And then I think, because yeah. obviously I was like quite sort of full steam ahead and I was like, cool, let's do like a video and lease and things. Mm-hmm. And yeah. suddenly like you guys were doing a lot of like motor stuff. Yeah. And there was just this, re- it was really fucking I mean, tough. the thing is like, you can't, you can't, you can't blame anyone for that because you were ready to go. You had an idea and you'd met some athletes that you were interested in. Like, yeah. And that's, that's absolutely, that's, that's right. And then, yeah, you just, you were ready to start giving the boys, the young boys opportunities. Yeah, you were able to start offering them opportunities. And I think that was, that's a really amazing thing. It was probably mm-hmm. a really and amazing thing. And that definitely is to tough as well. Cause it was like, oh, like you going on a trip somewhere. And then the other guy's like, oh, like, could you make a, br- yeah, could but- you make a Brooman thing? Or yeah, it was yeah. putting the Brooman logo intro and the Motors one. And I think even, if we like didn't put the broom on one first, there'd be a bit of a like, yeah. Could you put the broom on one first or whatever? And like, yeah. it would never be intentional, but I can I can understand it from both points oh, of view f- completely because they don't know you, yeah. and for you to like take us all to lease, and then that video blew up like yeah, pretty yeah, much, yeah, yeah. and then Brooman's trying to make its way up. It's like I can imagine they're like confused and mm. are they putting all the effort into motors or here yeah well, it, was a, it was a confusing time with everyone's mm. with yours max and luke's relationship with the brooming guys as well because mm-hmm. yeah there was just there was a lot of hostility about the whole thing it was like why are you doing this and people feeling like we should people should have been putting more effort into the team and then and then mm-hmm. but then you from, from my perspective i was like i don't know whether i should be asking less or more mm. like it was like do i just sort of say to the guys like look i want to go full steam ahead or like okay maybe you shouldn't be part of it because you want to focus on broom and it was yeah. like but obviously that i didn't necessarily want that because the guys just sort of were becoming part of something which yeah. then as motors grew became a kind of crucial part of the brand it was so i i used to fucking stretch because i don't like the fact that people i don't I, like there are definitely people out there who might not like me or think i'm lame or whatever but like there was a period where it really felt like a group of people did not like mm. me mm. and i was kind of i completely understood it but it wasn't a nice feeling and yeah. it was like i didn't know how unless i literally went all right i'm gonna stop yeah like, i'm gonna stop doing this yeah. like, i'm i actually i actually want to say now like because this is the, probably the first time we've ever had this conversation Ooh. but like <laughs> i'm sorry that it was such a it was such a rough time, man. Oh, like, but it's I, not I, like it, it never felt like it was anyone in. It was always just a vibe. Yeah. It never. Nobody ever like attacked me, and yeah. I. I don't think. I mean, there were definitely times where because it was exactly the same feeling from my side sometimes where like there would be I don't know motors would kind of you'd get invited out somewhere as like to a trip as motors athletes, 
And then it would feel like that turned into like a Bruman trip. And I'd be yeah. like, oh, that's kind of like, I thought that was going to feel like more of a motors thing. And mm. I'd feel a bit of like jealousy and spite. Yeah. But I don't think any of us were like ever like attacking each other. No. Mm. But it was just a weird vibe. It was, just, it, like, su- it was just such a difficult time. And yeah. It's when made me Bruman very. was trying to push itself. Motors was trying to push itself. It mm-hmm. had the unfortunate fact that. That that you three probably had to deal with a lot of the like what's going on. Yeah, yeah it was yeah, really yeah. weird to know yeah. what to push. Put, because sort of like it a, was a, so the a thing is it thing. was so yeah. different as well because what we get with Motus would be so different to Bruman. Yeah, yeah, and there was like benefits to both sides, which is why it was like I love both. Yeah. There's yeah. no way I can choose because yeah. like the chaos, the chaos of Bruman and like just parties and create like kind of not giving a fuck, but also yeah. pushing it. And then with Motus, it was so progressive. And like the opportunities and everything, yeah. it was like that's never going to happen again. And the, the, and, and the like mindedness and everything. So there's there's benefits of both. But what I will say is that, Nye being the kind of leader back then, I remember him being very like level headed about it because I would talk to him like one on one when I'd stay around his house about it all, and he yeah he he was just always kind of. I think he was confused as well. He's just like he doesn't know how to tackle this because he knows mm. a group of the Bruman guys aren't really sure about it yeah yeah yeah, yeah. like i never spoke to nye properly about it yeah but when I, I remember speaking to nye once in guildford and like he was just so like amicable mm. whereas it always felt like some of the other guys i mean they're all fucking i got absolutely no issues with them now yeah. but like there were periods where i'd be like at an event and i kind of just felt i was like oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't think these people like me very much yeah, like, yeah. but yeah such, such a crazy time but Free it was world. it was yeah like i had, i do have these thoughts so much imagining like who I am now and then imagining like what my friendship would be like with Nye mm-hmm. now. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. he was such like an interesting character, such a leader, um, very charismatic, just very interesting. I, I always wonder just what he would have ended up doing mm, and, yeah. and what sort of like relationship me and him would have had going forward in life, man. But um, yeah, I that that's probably what ended up leading to the sort of, and ending of, of Bruman, mm-hmm. I think in the end was the fact that he was such a glue for the whole group, for everyone to sort of come mm-hmm. together. And I think when he, uh, when he unfortunately left us, it was, yeah, it was, that was the it fine. Did. That's when we were all so loose and then there was no one. Well, it felt, yeah. Together. Cause I think you had like a period afterwards where you were unified mm. and it was like, because you kind of, there was that. Bruman ain't dead. <laughs> well, yeah. but it was also just like celebrating his life and you had the yeah. jams and the, the sort of shirts and things and it and, and some of you guys like tried to sort of keep it going but it then just slowly felt like yeah and it, that was a really tough period at the same time actually because like obviously motors was a separate entity and i wasn't necessarily slowing down yeah so because i think i don't know i can't really remember the years like when did he die that was Oof, that was I don't know the year. New Year's Eve. It's weird that oh. it's New Year's. Yeah, it's yeah, New Year's. it's crazy. But it was tough because I I wasn't signed down, March and then it was like, yeah, no, that was his birthday. The yeah. jams on his birthday, don't and then know. it was New Year's Eve. But I don't know the. It's really that whole time is so weird. Yeah, because I'd never had that happen before, mm. and it, and it, we no one really speaks about it that publicly. Mm. But um, yeah, it's kind of like a blur. Like I don't even. I don't know if you get this, but sometimes it's like, did that, I get this with loads of things, but did that actually happen? Yeah. Like all of it, it kind of just feels like, oh, that's someone else's Seems life. like a dream now. Yeah, well, exactly. That, that whole period of life. Like, yeah. yeah. But it's like, you, you have to go through those things and they are a shock, but it's kind of like an eye opener to like, mm. okay, that can happen. Yeah. You know? And, yeah. and also like being, that definitely was, um, afterwards when it happened. Yeah. Mo, uh, Bruman kind of, was kind of full steam ahead for a bit, but I think it was just because of that tragedy. Yeah, that it kind of brought people closer. Yeah, and when that wore off, the fact there wasn't like, a, was like, there yeah. wasn't like a somebody there wasn't that f- official new leader to no, really kept it going. But that yeah. was just a, a, a fire for a bit, just yeah. the, like the last. Bit it was of him. it was the whole thing of like nice legacy. Like this is what he wanted mm-hmm. to do. Let's keep that. Let's keep and that it just fire burning and stuff yeah, like that. And didn't last really. And yeah, but well, that, that's the thing. If you don't have especially the group of such crazy individuals as Bruman was Mm. and all of us, yeah, having such massive personalities and like drives, having, not having someone to sort of contain that and sort of not like, and sort of direct it. It just ended Mm. up being like, like, I think, I think it was Brandon uh, Douglas on the height drop podcast with Luke. And he said, because they, they spoke about it and how it kind of like fizzled out. And I think he sort of summed it up in the way that I think he said something along the lines of like, 
sometimes the brightest flames burn for like a short period. It's like yeah. you light a match and it's like yeah. mm -hmm. very fucking bright, big impact, lots of shit going on, but it doesn't like last forever kind of yeah. thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, That's true. But yeah, that was tough as well because as Bruman, it, it kind of obviously Bruman had that really strong period after Nye died and then it, and then it, as it started to like fade, Motus was really picking up and we were doing like the US yeah. tour and mm -hmm. things like that. And that was tough because it was like, it, it like I can understand that it's wrong, but I know it's well, not. It, it but was it's like, like it's that's like, just happened. It, and it, if by giving you guys more opportunities and you guys then putting more into Motus, is that then contributing to like the fizzling out of Bruman? And it was yeah. like that weird kind of guilt, but also it wasn't. I mm -hmm. like I don't think it. I don't think. It <sighs> yeah, I, I don't necessarily think it was, but at the same time, it didn't make things easier. Yeah. And it's like, is me sort of fulfilling my dream that does involve also bringing up these guys yeah. who have now become quite an integral part of sort of m this thing mm. is that then hurting that thing even more right, like that right. thing's injured kind of thing and yeah, it's like it was yeah, fuck yeah. it it's weird yeah, I can imagine how much of weird a weird time but like the we've thing, got a hand up from bloggy what does oh, that mean five seconds before recording ends Ooh, what again um if there was a weird jump there it's because we had a card fill up or i don't really know i need to work this whole system out but we are running out of time on the day. So Bloggy is now fulfilling orders because he's a fucking legend. Mm. So we've left the cameras just on the wide angle. Um, so if you're watching, apologies if there aren't any camera transitions. But yeah, we'll, we'll get back into into this, wherever yeah. we were. I can't remember where we were. We were somewhere. We were kind I of talking about how Bruman You were saying fizzled. about how you were feeling like you weren't sure whether you were kind of kicking kicking us while we were down with the because you Motus was sort of progressing yeah, yeah, at yeah, that yeah. time but yeah. we were sort of trying to strive forward and yeah that must have been a, a pretty difficult time figuring out how how you felt about just doing Motus and making your dream happen mm -hmm. in the midst of this other this other thing what I was going to say is like the reason like you've got to look at it as the bigger picture it's like th a group of very young people got together and tried to do something that their aid that they that they didn't know how to do do you know what i mean which is to lead a group of indi individuals towards a specific goal and they're they're learning the entire time that they're doing that now in comparison to you who's like a older far more well-versed experienced understands a few more it's things funny, about when, the, the way you just described like that just sounded like you were describing me still no, I was, that's Bruin. That, no, but like it's. Oh, really? Yeah, I've still fucking felt that way. I've got no idea what I'm fucking doing. But still, like, like when you when you I think as you started to do Motus, yeah, you just you just had a little bit more. You had a little bit more to offer and understood a few more things about how to progress, and you just a little bit more matured in that. I think I was a bit more like I've got a very set goal, and I was I was quicker to like go. Like yeah. to action and be like, cool, this, 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 this. You, you like, knew the steps. And I think with with guy, the guys in Bruin, we really didn't know how to do anything. And everything was learning how to do it while it was happening. Where I it's think, so funny because you say, I, like, I don't feel like I knew anything. Right, but really. I think I was just, I was a bit more, I guess, because it's just me. Like I, even sort of just being previous, if that's the right word, to like, I don't know, you guys trying to organize a trip or something. Mm. It always sounded like it was a lot more like, you know, herding cats. Yeah. Whereas if I needed to make something happen, for the most part, I could make, I could get it kind of all organized and be like, yeah. guys, we're doing this. Well, that's the thing is, it's, it's like you, you go to five people yeah, and you're like, guys, we should all go away skiing this month. Or you buy the tickets, you book the chalet and you say, here's the tickets, we're going skiing this month. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then they give you the true. money after. Yeah. It's like you either, what you were doing essentially was, was that. Like, was, was that you mm -hmm. had things prepared, you were ready to go. So when it came to getting the the guy, um, like Keenan and Luke and everyone to, and then Max to, to jump on board, it was so easy for them. It yeah. was so just like, well, mm -hmm. of course, like it's all like with the lease trip, you sort of organized that and invested invested your time and energy and money. And I love the fact that because you guys are so young, I literally made like a little, like I said, I speak to all their parents because obviously I was taking them abroad yeah. mm -hmm. and I had to make like a little booklet of like emergency contact numbers and things. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was like, these parents, like I'm the older one here. So I have to kind of at least act like I'm not an idiot. Yeah, yeah. it's different to like Broom and all, everyone being the same age and there's no one who's kind of in charge of everyone's yeah, health. Yeah. It's just like, we're going on a trip as friends. Whereas yours yeah, was I felt like, very responsible. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. taking Max to America and I had to like have a phone call with his dad and stuff. Really? Like, yeah. Just because he'd never met me and he was like, I just want to like, 
just have a chat with you. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh shit, I'm going to get grilled. <laughs> yeah. But uh, to, to cycle back to kind of, I guess, to make this more about you, because, you know, it's your, you're the, you're the Hello. guest. Hello. What was it like for you as kind of, because I, I guess from like Keelan's perspective or whatever, as Broomin started to like fizzle away, Keelan probably felt more like he had something. Whereas you kind of, I guess, mm. didn't so much, but mm. you're obviously getting more into filmmaking and things. And now, I mean, you're doing, from from my perspective, so you sort of you seem to be in a very good position. You're loving what you do, et cetera, et cetera. But like, how were you at any point like, Oh, broom is my future. And then right. as that faded, were you like, oh fuck? Or did you kind of I don't know, like, I don't know yeah, how you how you went through that situation? I um I ne I don't think I ever had like if I'm comparing to conversations I've had with Aiden, Aiden when he was involved with Bruman really saw like that was his future. That's what he was gonna do. Bruman was that was his that was his dream and his goal was to make Bruman happen. But for me, I never really I don't think I'd thought that far ahead. Yeah. I was part of Bruman, cool, and I wanted to see if I, see how much I can help to make that happen. But not, it hadn't yet occurred to me that I was thinking that far ahead to be like, this is what I want to happen. This is my dream and my goal to make to make Bruman a thing. So I think when it did fizzle away, at that time I was already starting to get into filmmaking and um, and, and moving into that sort of industry. I was studying it at the time. And also about, the, I think I was on like last year when it, well, it was still when I started working as a freelance, um, like videographer that it started to fully, like when we actually liquidated the accounts and everything like that, and we like finished it all up and closed yeah. it. So yeah, I, it was never much of a big hit for me. I don't think I liked Broom and I liked, I really liked having that purpose to be involved in the community and to do parkour i like the opportunities it gave me to like travel abroad and go to events and um have have actually a like something that's asking me to make creative project like, like to make mm -hmm. creative work for it like yeah. i miss making parkour videos yeah, yeah yeah because i don't have i'm not part of a, like a parkour team anymore not part of broom and wear it's like we're gonna we're trying to put out content uh, parkour content like i don't think like that anymore and i i can't remember the last time i thought about hmm, maybe i should make a parkour project like i got into filmmaking from me and keelan being like we're going training let's make a sick parkour video the thing i actually like a lot though is that i think it it can be really advantageous from a filming perspective to basically have time away from having parkour as your key focus because you have i don't know it's like you've obviously done you're sort of inc doing an increasing amount of like commercial projects which it's not so just focused around like make the park all look good or whatever mm. and sam white who the other even have you met sam uh no of him yeah the, yeah, the filmmaker he, we, he's done some stuff with us he like when he's come in and like done an edit of like i don't know the workshop video or like the the get lost lookbook or something or like things like that he can bring such an exterior like commercial Mm. eye to it and make a very like uh, like a, an edit that i simply couldn't do because yeah. the only editing i really know is like parkour yeah and so like when i the stuff that i've seen of you from soul and like i know you had a big hand in the the trailer and things it's fucking impressive because i can spot that you're not just like oh i'm making a parkour video you're like you're bringing in that kind of your skills yeah. that you've learned right, outside, outside mm. yeah um it also goes vice versa that like i've definitely man like i still edit commercial videos like i'm editing a park or video like especially the style that Bruin brought to its to its content which i still love which was hector, hector pitt definitely inspired it yeah with mm. his parkour edits which was this real because we, we, we were we were smoking weed at that time and like we were starting <laughs> like we were we were like sort of like yeah we're dabbling we, we're dabbling yeah, yeah. and so our edits were so inspired by that sort of by that sort of like so psychedelic like, sort of like, rocky edits. like LSD yeah, yeah, yeah. period Tame yeah. parlor as well yeah. and just all of that and stuff. that like that is definitely still so uh, like vibrant in, in the way in which I edit now and the way in which I do is still so sort of psychedelic and has these sort of trippy it's like Hector's music visuals that I tried to yeah. do yeah. Hector's music videos he basically went cool I've developed my style shooting like Broomin videos and mm -hmm. he was obviously dabbling like I guess around that yeah. period he was getting into music videos but now he's just like killing it in the music world yeah. and it's like you can watch it and be like that's Hector's style like yeah. that's that's a hardcore video but it's a fucking grime he video he does have or, a very yeah. unique style to yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean still still some of my favourite parkour videos 
are uh, like Yard Ape, Yard Ape XL because of like those guys were smoking so much weed at that time. Those guys were definitely like at the laptop, just like, you yeah. know what I mean? Just like with it, like, and, and those edits, I loved them so much. I loved, I loved what it brought the sort of like crazy, uh, sort of like hypnotic style it had with mm-hmm. it. Um, but yeah, so, so yeah, sort of parkour editing definitely now translates into my commercial work, but I'm also learning things in, in the work that I'm doing, which I want to bring back into parkour videos. Yeah, like, yeah, oh, yeah, I'm yeah. so gassed to like, I, I still get excited about making, like thinking about parkour videos I might want to make like yeah. myself mm-hmm. just for a passion project and how I would do it and what I'd be able to bring in terms of the skills that I've, that I've got now into something like a parkour video. I yeah. think narratively you could bring some fucking weird stuff oh, in, yeah. in such a good way. Cause we've yeah. had so many conversations about like video ideas and yeah. things and you always bring such like, just because I think your inspiration now pulls from movies and pulls from series and certain directors and like the big boys yeah. that when you think about like making a parkour video, you want to bring in stuff like that. Yeah. Man. Like you yeah. don't want it just to be parkour. You want to like try and tap into something else yeah. that might not even be about parkour, but it like fits so well. well. That's the thing. Like I've always sort of, thought this and someone said this about like my videos is people Mm -hmm. are like oh you're an amazing filmmaker and it's like i'm i I would admit i am i I know how to make parkour look good and Mm -hmm. i'm not bad but people like oh like i don't know when when you say to somebody when i used to like oh i'm a filmmaker they're like oh what sort of oh you into this film and they expect you to be into like art house and and shit and they have an interest in cameras and like the only time i was ever knew about camera specs was when i needed a new one and i'd I'd like (laughs) google for a few weeks Mm -hmm. i'm not i was never that like filmmaker whereas you Mm -hmm. sort of oh as the years have gone by you've got a much more in-depth knowledge of like film and the industry and everything Mm -hmm. and i just like that was never happening for me yeah i was i'm i'm when I make videos, I'm just like, cool, I'm going to make the parkour look good. And I, my videos would be better if I looked further, if I, if I broadened my field of interests. Yeah. But that's, I guess that's not what mm-hmm. I'm doing. So but you have to look at your portfolio as well, because think about the commercial work that you've done as well. Because I know you had with Visit Productions and I did some of that. Not that much though. And I hated all of it. But you've been, really? You've, you've made so many, you've been involved and done so many projects, parkour related. Yes, and also some other ones outside of yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I've done like cycling films and a few music videos and things, but not yeah. not the. Like, I reckon you've already your your portfolio portfolio of kind of commercial work is probably broader and higher quality than mine ever was. I think. I don't know. There's like, a few things I'm happy yeah, with, but like yeah. I think I, I really didn't get that deep into it before. I was like, this is not for me. Right. Um, I I mean Sam Sam White other Sam his his the shit he does is fucking mm-hmm. mad. I really want both I Sams like to meet. Stuff. Yeah, you yeah, should just because meet. it yeah it'd be cool to to see both you working on something one day or just chatting because oh, whenever yeah. he's here I'm like whatever he's chatting I'm like Sam would really want to hear yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I think you, you know? too would. I mean, um, I really liked the lookbook he made. Like, it yeah. was super cool. Super also, just contacts as well. Like, if you can get contacts off of him, then yeah, yeah actually, yeah, sick. he probably he always needs mm-hmm. extra hands on things. So. But what I yeah. what I will say with like Soul that we're editing at the moment, Sam's always like he makes it fun. Like, you want to find the fun in something or the practicality about things. Like, obviously, we're we haven't really got a proper deadline, but we've got to try and get the shit out. But you're always coming up with ideas like. Well, let's practically let's actually make this thing to use right. or make yeah, this. Yeah, you want to do practical effects, like, don't because you? it's yeah. because it is all about the doing of it. Yeah. Once it's done, like yes, it's done, but there is that the process yeah. which you're like you want to make it fun and you want to make it different. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I definitely. I mean, this is the roughest part of the whole production right now, which is bone structuring, where it's sort of like that, that really tedious part, especially with the type of type of project we're doing currently, which is yeah, we keep talking. You know, about trying that. to is it bad. Should we not? No, 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 no. Talk about it. Okay, I'm just yeah. saying we always it's, talk about how hard that is. It's the fact that with this project as well, you're drawing so many different bits of footage that you've filmed. Like there's not like, we didn't have a clapperboard, man. We can't, we don't have like a log sheet. Yeah, it's not that you've got, you've got five shots of a scene and you're like, cool, I'm constructing this. Yeah, yeah it's, it's like, like you're literally pulling from so many different places, trying to pull it into one condensed narrative piece. And like, yeah. that's a, that's a like a, a whole massive field of like your brain trying to figure out everything. You almost have to watch every 
part of the camp. Like every everything you filmed, everyone's interview, and after you've done that one process, then you can start beginning oh, drawing 100. stuff in. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. It takes ages, man, and that's why I've been that's why I've been it's in like, London so much. <laughs> <laughs> like I don't want to do that, man. Just get me on After Effects and I'll make things look cool. But yeah, yeah. No, Jake, no, it's no, I, I, you've got to do. You, you have to cut selects, and you kind of get a once over, and you're like, okay, I think I'm familiar with the footage, and then yeah. you realise that by the time you finish selects, you've forgotten half of it. Yeah, and then you have to revisit loads of bits, and then you have to watch all the interviews and you yeah. have to cut the interviews and cut all the bullshit out mm-hmm. and then you're like oh wait some of that bullshit might have actually worked because yeah. you haven't you haven't built the story yet that's the thing and then you got to start piecing it together but you don't want it to be too narrative driven so that it's like and then we did this and then we did this and then we did this yeah. mm-hmm. it's like your fir- the first draft you had of the it int- was literally just the this intro and this and yeah this. it was just and yeah. we did this uh-huh. And so it's like you've got to do that, and then you've got to break it back, and then you've yeah. got to go. Okay, well now what footage complements this? Yeah. And then you're like, shit, I kind of need something to fill this scene, but we don't actually have footage from that day. Yeah. So where's something that? And in your head, you're like, oh, going in the select, like where? It's long. Yeah. It's so, so long. fucking long. Yeah. You're making your own puzzle. Yeah. It, it really is that. But I. And it's also the fact that you're as your the creativity is coming from trying to build the narrative mm. in a way that is like creative with the way in which you're putting the shots together with the music and and the thing that i think i find is that once i have and i've suffered this kind of on documentary pieces i made and like off the edge and things is once you are finished building the narrative and you almost have your bone structure you kind of have two options whereby you can say okay well now i almost have like my my clay or you Mm. can go i'll polish it up and export it yeah (laughs) because you i think and i think that is the thing that makes something you can you can take because and that's why i think you're excited about getting past this point because mm. it's like you can take something and go crazy on it or you yeah. can just be like fuck i'm exhausted like yeah like mm-hmm. i, I, I it, it worked it's a narrative it's a piece like let's yeah. get it out mm-hmm. so. i mean it'll be interesting because i really should with 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 what i'm bone structuring i really should watch all of the footage from the day and all of the interviews and once I've done like it has to be that process because that's the only way in which you'll really be able to see the full picture that you mm-hmm. then ha- that that's when you can start pulling yeah. yeah but um I guess that's a really amazing way to look at it as well like even once you've bone structured you're like oh we finally bone structured it because that like, feels complete it's not done yet like, yeah that feels yeah. like you mold this and make it even but like let's not polish yeah, the yeah. bone structure let's keep going with it which yeah, I think yeah. is something we should take into the process definitely yeah, yeah. um so th- this sounds like quite a weird question but like, how why? big is your? <laughs> <laughs> so it's just I've been thinking. How was puberty that, for you? Yeah. <laughs> Sapiens. No. What? Why? Why do you like sitting down on a, on a computer for ages and editing? Why? Why is that fun for you? Um, I'm not saying it's not always fun. I'm just genuinely. You can asking. Okay, so this is this is an interesting one because some filmmakers hate post. Mm-hmm. Like yeah, some, some. Yeah. Like they don't enjoy it. That. that yeah. I, I. I mean, a lot of people are like, yeah, I love. I love like the filming part of it, the the pre-production or the the actual production, but post I can't do it. Like I've got to get an editor in, but yeah. I come from the realm in film where I come as a self-shooting director. So I sort of in a very amateur way, learn how to do everything from mm. like production to working with clients, like commissioning to then conceptualizing. But what forced to, that was the, the, yeah. the development of cameras. Because if you look back 20 yeah. years, and you look at kind of the more like, I don't know, like when I got into like DSLR shooting, there were big names, like I don't know, Philip Bloom and think people like this who were these kind of, they were like quite progressive in the sense of they made a lot of content around DSLR shooting and stuff. But they used to be like just cameramen. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or you were just a director or you yeah. were just an editor. It was because, more archaic. The, the yeah, you, you, could, you could save up your money and buy one giant camera. And then you basically, because you had that camera and you knew how to shoot half decently, you were then valuable. Yeah. But the second it was like, well, that cameraman can also edit. He's worth more than you. Yeah. And then it was like, well, that cameraman also has the creative vision to yeah. shoot a certain way and be a DOP. And it's like... Well, it's now the, the barriers to entry to work in film are so... And, and a lot of other creative... It's a fucking iPhone. It's, yeah, literally. It's <laughs> like, like, the, the barriers are so are so broad and anyone can really just be like, well, I'm just going to be a filmmaker now that just get out the new iPhone yeah. 13 and get a concept or a client involved. And there you are. You're, you're, you you're basically literally, have to you're offer everything. You're literally doing it. But mm-hmm. at, back in the day, like... You, you you had to get into you know camera equipments you couldn't just get a camera and then a laptop and an editing suite like that wasn't accessible to you because the equipment was so expensive yeah unless you can get a job where you're being able to get the the thing i the think equipment. that you see is that you see people who you have to learn everything and then yeah. as you build your um 
your skill set and also your client base, you are then able to niche down into what you truly like. Right. It's like you yeah. have to offer everything as a as a as a yeah. sort of self shooting director, mm-hmm. producer, editor, etc. But then you move into into the realm where it's like I'm doing bigger production. The money now. starts so to get am bigger. I a director, yeah. Am I a DOP? Am I a producer? Yeah. Like what the budgets get like? Because if I said my Sam, Sam focus I'm, puller. Yeah, that's yeah. crazy. That's a thing. That's yeah. 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 Like, yeah, fucking so Sam. Many. Sam brought one on the get lost shoot. Mm-hmm. Billy. Yeah. Um, if I said Sam, hundred grand to shoot an advert for Motors, you could definitely pocket it. Oh, okay, not Motors, Adidas. Yeah. And it's like it's got to meet a certain standard, yeah. and you're filming this spec. You wouldn't be like, well, I used to be, I used to do it all on my own. I'm going to do it myself. Yeah. You would immediately be like, all right, so I'm going to direct, like, yeah. and this guy, I'm going to bring yeah. this guy in and pay him because it's like you. Yeah. Well, what would well, you do? That's how you. Well, that's you, how you, What role would you take? What role would I take? So ideally, the role I'm trying to move into now which is I'm trying to I'm trying to get my job, which is either a director or a DOP, where I come from the self shooting director background, but I'm wanting to start taking on bigger work, which will mean I need to start working with that, like with with actual crews to be able to get the bigger budgets in to yeah. and then to get the job done right. Do you know what I mean? But you don't have to and, and and there's reasons for those jobs. Like I've I've been recently on shoots where I was camera opping, DOPing and directing. And it's just like the quality of the video just isn't as good if I had someone to focus pull and I had someone to hold the camera while I actually worked with the, the best. talent to get what I wanted. Like mm-hmm. there are reasons why there's like micro jobs for yeah for, for these things. The best set. thing as well is the bigger the crew gets, the less blame can be put on you if something goes wrong. Because <laughs> you're like, they're like, oh, that shot's a bit shit. You're like, yeah, that was the focus pull. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah, like I, I don't like being a self shooting director stressful it's man. fucking st- it's it's fine when it's this is the thing i didn't like when it's your creative project it's fine the second you've got a client over your shoulder yeah. being like blah, 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 you're like this doesn't feel like mine anymore yeah and your ideas are shit yeah like and then it gets weird and then you have to do 15 revisions on the edit and change the song three yeah. times you're like i hate but this the, mm-hmm. but the thing is like it's so important i'm so glad that i came in from that self-shooting um director like that's how i came up because i really learned really important skills like how to work with a client and and then how to sort of like learn what my rates are and how to do how to understand each aspect of the role because then when i go into other jobs i'm able to i'm able to have that skill now where i can come in and be like i'm the director let's conceptualize this idea i actually know about budgeting i know who to get involved with i need a producer or you know i'm starting to understand that system a bit more and it's i do look at it bloody amateur like yeah i I look at it and i'm like i should have probably stuck with it because i think I was probably at the cusp where things, if I just stuck with it, I, like things could have gone in a good direction and I could have moved on to those bigger projects where it wasn't just me. And I'd probably be earning a lot more money. Yeah. Because I've got friends now who are sort of, I mean, Sam, for example, when he works on these huge jobs and I'm like, should have, should have done that. <laughs> instead, instead I'm here talking to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, it's sick. So, so like, I always find the DOP one interesting because I, I, I don't know. In my What's head, the I'm, difference if you're a director or a director of photography? Does the director... Well, the director might be directing the scene. But actors. do they have a say in the picture? In like... Yeah. yeah. So the, the director and the DOP will be working like... Kind of side by like side. The entire okay. time. Yeah. Like yeah. the director's like this is how I want everything to look. Please, can you use your skill set to make that happen in front of me? And that is it's like, like, yes. In an, I guess if you think about, I don't know, like when we go and shoot parkour and Johnson's involved, you could consider sometimes what I'm doing is directing and, and then Johnson is, because I'm like, that Johnson, I'm like, yeah. Johnson, you're fucking amazing. Yeah. I well, trust, actually, like, I trust your skill set. Yeah. yeah. Well, that but, was kind of the same with Soul then, because we had the idea of doing that tour. And then I, I mean, we are just friends, but like I got in contact with you and I was like, can you come on and film and yeah. also like do parkour and have a good time too? And then yeah. your ideas come up of like how to make things better, well, which is your natural yeah. DOP mind going like, yeah, how can we make this good? But we've talked a lot about this. Soul was a different beast because oh, we thought it's not like we, we weren't like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna, we've got this project. We've got this idea. Let's go shoot it. We're gonna, it's going to be like a two day shoot. And this is the concept. We're going to try and make that happen. It's mm-hmm. like you're going on a tour and you're the athlete, the driver, the camera op, like everything, I fucking love it, and I, I, loved I love it too. how loose it is. But like, no, we I, did, in our I mind, we were trying to make some sort of like we were we were trying to make a work of art. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah, you get yeah. on the tour and you're tired. You've been training all day. It's like someone's like, "Can you film this?" And you're like, "Oh, I've got to film." Like, 
Do you know what I mean? Someone's like shouting at you to get the car started up. Like it's it's crazy yeah. to try and make a film when you've got all of those other roles. I think that's well. why in that kind of construct, you have to almost, you, you set the scene, which is the tour and you put the, the talent in, which are the athletes and things and the cameramen almost need to be, I, I think all it takes is, because if you think even like roof culture or something like that is a fucking film, docu-film or whatever it is, but it's shot beautifully, but it was never, and there were a few, there were a few like sequences I would say that before the trip, we discussed, I remember like one that never happened. It was like, oh, mm -hmm. cause there, there's, a, it was always going to be intersections mm -hmm. like Hong Kong, Tokyo, Seoul. And each one was going to have a sort of a meaning and a vibe behind it. Like mm -hmm. Tokyo was more about, it was the, it was the, the what, the why, no, the what, the how and the why, mm -hmm. because it was what is roof culture, which is the Hong Kong. It was the, the how, which is like the, cause Tokyo obviously has showed all the ground training. And then Seoul was the why, and it was like the vibe. Mm -hmm. um, that was very, very loosely kind of there, but they had ideas of transitioning between scenes. And I remember like Toby and Sasha discussing like, oh, imagine like the guys are all chilling out in a cafe one night and there's like a TV like crackling in the corner mm -hmm. and then like a, a, a shot appears on that and it transitions in or something. But like stuff like that, never, to hear that. Stuff like that never happened, never happened yeah. but it was just fleshed out little ideas. Mm -hmm. But I think you just construct, you, you give it what you can, which is like the, 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 the framework and you put the right people in Mm. And then you kind of just have to like trust and nudge in, yeah. in directions and yeah. kind of, and cause it's a tour, like you don't know what the fuck's going to happen. That's, like we got, that's the thing. Yeah. We, we got we broken into in, in oh, yeah, when we San did Fran, the like America one, but we should have been more like focusing on the tour and just go, let's film as much this, of this as possible and see what we can make out of yeah. it. Because the expectation of making something crazy and especially because, um, well, our minds were focused on that rather than the actual tour. Well, I, That's where we got a bit like making hell. making like a cinematic work of art with yeah. like pre-planned shots is yeah. possible, but fuck me, is it hard on a tour? Like, if, yeah. if we were to do that again, mm -hmm. and we were trying to make a film, because I got caught, I got caught up with the fact that I was on the tour, and I didn't even like if I if we if I could start from the beginning all again, first thing I'd be doing was renting a really brilliant camera to use across those weeks, mm -hmm. do you know what I mean? That can get really amazing footage. And then I would actually probably, the thing, the thing is, is I wouldn't be able to do that at the time because I was, I wanted to train of everyone. I was on the tour, I was caught up in the moment. You have I to, wasn't it's, thinking about the fact that I was making a film. you're like a character in, in that film. Yeah. Which yeah. you can't, like, I'd prefer that over anything you making yeah, it. Yeah, so. like I was, I, if I, yeah. yeah, if I could do it all again, I would be like, I'm actually gonna take myself away from training. I'm gonna take myself away from like trying to have this good time. And I try and take a more like film make, uh, like professional filmmaking approach and actually- It's the hardest thing though. That. Cause it, I, like, I've always thought about this cause I've done obviously a few tours. If you are pulled in, I don't know, like let's say you were pulled in to go and film a band that you didn't know the music of and you didn't, and, and the band is like the celebrities. It's a lot easier to then put yourself behind the camera. Yeah, and I think I was I was half decent at doing that on like off the edge, not because I wasn't incredible friends with the guys, but I think because my I was the only cameraman, so yeah. it, it was me or nothing. Right. And I, I think I grew up, I don't know, with Tim and things, and I was very good at putting my just going cool. I'm behind the camera. Like, I was just the guy behind the camera. But when it's your mates and you're all touring together, mm. different beast because it's, it's so yeah. hard to. Because I do the opposite then get a big camera i'd be like get a camera in everyone's hands and right, encourage everyone right. to try and capture every moment and just have fun no, with it that's a really interesting and find the gold within that yeah. the cinematic quality wouldn't necessarily be the same but i would then rely on but it's also a tour when you're trying to capture all of those very candid moments yeah you know I mean? yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's like you're not sitting there with the camera being like can you do that again it's like everything is what happens in that moment yeah capture it or die it's why yeah it's, it's, <laughs> it'll fucking die <laughs> <laughs> it's why it's why like yeah a cinematic piece is so much harder yeah mm -hmm. so so much harder well that's a really interesting way of look i mean that's what you guys did on uh spitting in the wind as well you just put gopros in everyone's hands and, and the dad cams like and the dad cam yeah, got, yeah like, three out. three buttons on it you just say cool press record yeah and zoom because yeah. if you're like oh here's a gh5 it's like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or like, well yeah i'm thinking of something like having like a komodo on that like a red komodo yeah taking that around with me i would have to be on it at imagine all though time. Like, well this it, is i mean car and it being like filled up and then you're the driver and going could you just get that shot and they're getting out a fucking komodo a big yeah yeah sorry let me set up the gimbal i'll get the focus <laughs> filler in it's yeah, like cool yeah. moment, moment's gone <laughs> exactly yeah, absolutely. you need run and gun for that kind of thing it's the way i think it's a crazy hard balance to try and get if you're like if you're trying to make a really well-made tour video 
mm-hmm. that like how can you do that how can you assure that quality how can you make it this sort of like work of art as much as it's this i think ideally you try and get both you have someone because like if you think about stora sasha is definitely i mean toby's an incredible filmmaker but sasha is like an artist yeah, when it comes yeah, to he's catch, amazing. when it comes to capturing like he finds a beauty in just the most mundane shit like and i think y- y- it would be like yeah if you were renting a komodo to shoot beauty you would have to have someone else shooting the equivalent amount of just run and gun everything mm-hmm. and try and hope and ho- hope all the cameras are like i don't know there you you shoot everything on sony so you've got kind of matching color balances and things yeah. and you try and get everything as matching as possible and you'd always have that like because we spoke about before summer of love like it, mm-hmm. it, and I, I think even sam white was like oh i'd be interested and I, i'd love to get like him I, I think to be honest both of you would fucking kill it but like i, I mean actually you two dream we get the sams on board mm. great because you you've got your park hall vision and then sam's got pure commercial and you could go yeah. cool like you could split it. Mm-hmm. It'll be that. I'd kind love of thing. to see that. Yeah, I mean, I learned a lot from doing the motors tour. Like, I'd, 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 I would take approach to filmmaking it completely different. Yeah. Now so doing it again. I remember you saying stuff like, "Wow, did Jars have to deal with all of this?" Like, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. While oh. doing the tour, like you realized. I mean, I definitely fucking realized too. <laughs> yeah. It's so tough. I um, was like, I, yeah. I massive cu- like kudos. How do you say it? kudos? Kudos. 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 Just ma- just like respect for you doing mm-hmm. spitting in the wind and any other sort of. Oh, tour we were kids like, as well. I was so like, Jars handled all of this like and made that good and of sarah point. like i can't believe sarah actually somehow didn't lose her mind and somehow <laughs> came she off she, she came out the back of it loving it she was like i want to do it again like, wow but um what was at, it? at least with something like speaking the wind mm. it, i think it does help to all be tra- traveling in the same van when you got multiple cars and it's like trying yeah to, that was hard like, but what tough. what was it like because i mean this was this is a motors tour and a motors film but you were i think you were the only one who was actually like a feature because right. people did pop in of the, the film but you're like you are part of the film yeah. so it's like you got to see what happens on like motors trips and stuff yeah. not saying that they're like crazy different to anyone else's trips but yeah. do you know what i mean you got to see how everyone works and things what yeah. was that like was it uh that was that was cool i guess i've seen you guys do your projects before uh yeah like, it wasn't I, fully new was it i guess well yeah i've just i've just seen it from the outside and i've just been like this is this is that looks like a lot of fun do you know mm-hmm. what I mean? that looks like a sick thing and so i felt i was felt very blessed that i was able to come on board and and jumped on with you guys and you got quite close with like everyone pretty oh, much. i enjoy it yeah everyone everyone who went on that tour was like mm-hmm. so fun to be around like, i had a really great time um i just realized yeah. that you have actually now spent more time like in that environment, like a filming, training, traveling environment with people like kind of Rachel and Ethan than I ever have. Really? Like, oh, yeah. yeah. I've, 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 especially Ra- I'm Rachel in the UK, so I've seen her loads, but like I haven't done like two weeks slogging around the country with those guys. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's so true. So, Normally you'd be right in, yeah, like, like for in some the midst of, of the people athletes. like Keelan and a lot, it's like it's completely fucking normal. But yeah. I mean, yeah. how was it for you? Because I know you came on that day uh, in London. Did you sort of have a little bit of FOMO and like. Oh, about, fucking yeah. 100%. Yeah. Like a billion percent and also like a bit of fear because leading up to it i felt keelan had done like a really like he'd been so on it in terms of direction and sky zoom meetings and things and yeah. like way more than i would have expected because mm. he was like oh cool i'm gonna have a zoom yeah, meeting with I'm sam and talk anxious. about this <laughs> yeah that was anxiety and then on it i think i've said this on another podcast the most vocal people were the ones who were maybe being a bit more negative about what was going on like right. oh the guys are still in bed and it's 10 a.m and things right. so a lot of the like the lens i was seeing was like, because it's just everything's WhatsApp. going to shit. I was just like, like oh, the quality is like, happening. and it was like every night the guys were like drinking. Like, it's it's a tour, so like, it's people are drinking and then yeah. they're like waking up late, and I'm just like, is anything getting filmed? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, oh, there was no. that massive part of you that's like, I'm like, I'm investing. In, yeah, like, this is <laughs> an investment. But is, am I going to get a see a return on this? It was never going to be that, you know, when like every day we were going to like update you and go this these good shit i mean maybe we should have but like the the negative <laughs> things are always going to be the things that stick out yeah, that someone's yeah. going to tell you about but all the good shit like when we had a good day and filmed loads of stuff like no one's really c- gonna tell you that no you know what I mean? yeah unless not it was like not that you don't deserve it yeah. yeah but it's like the negative things and i i guess. didn't i didn't really get any i'd say reassurance until mm-hmm. i started seeing the footage yeah, yeah. and even then I, I didn't see that much footage and like it, i watched like the london edit the other day and there's like stuff in there no not the london edit the bristol edit and there's stuff in there yeah. that i didn't know existed and things mm. so it's like 
I'm starting to see it now and it's fucking sick. I mean, so. I didn't even, I didn't message the group chat once. <laughs> like, <laughs> like I kept on hearing on the tour, like there'd be stories like, oh, did you see the group chat? Did you see what someone put in the group chat? I was like, oh yeah, we've got a group chat. Like, yeah, it's already messaged that. I'll <laughs> give an update on something. Um, um, I'm just going to check the the limit on that thing. Okay, yeah, sure. that's cool. I, I want to make sure that we get this in. We've because been going for 34. Uh, 34 on. right now. Can we carry on while you're checking? Yeah, yeah, go for it. No, because we haven't spoken about this, but and I don't think people... We Not everyone knows this. Minutes. Oh, perfect. Cool. Um, bringing it back to you. Yeah. Bringing it back. Me. Wow, we've spoken about a lot of things that aren't you. I'm so sorry. No, I've been enjoying this chat. Oh, this is a very nice chat. No, it's I love good it. Chat. But it's like, you are the guest. This you is a long one. Here. So if you're still listening and watching, yeah. then thank you. Yeah. But I'm, I'm sorry you've had to put up with all this, you know, with me <laughs> chatting up. You know, mate. Smack. <laughs> um, but a lot of people don't know how good you are at parkour, really. I, I really think you are... Yeah, we touched over. on it at the start, didn't we? But we didn't really go into yeah, it. And yeah, he, and George said it a lot. Like, loads of the Motors guys said it. They marked a lot too. They don't realise how good you are. Right. Do you know what I mean? Because I, I don't know what it is, whether maybe because you're not pushing yourself that much anymore as an athlete and you're not going, like, look at what I can do. Yeah. Training just happens when it happens. But you've, ha you've got, like, two world firsts at IMAX. Right, yeah. And done some, like, groundbreaking shit, but because you're not putting yourself out there so much, it's not really like... Yeah. I think also a lot of your... Like, you haven't put out that much solo stuff. It's not like you push Instagram that hard and cut yeah. the training. I've so never it's made like, a show reel for no. a very long time. So you mm. normally when you pop up in a video, it's like, it's harder to pick one person out of that video. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, like, it was... Because uh, I think this a lot. During Bruman, I w my peak was still in the future. Like I feel now currently in my life, I'm the strongest and well, at one of my strongest and at my most confident with, with parkour. And I feel mm -hmm. like if I put more energy into it, I could, yeah, I, I'm really excited to see what, what I might be able to do or something like that. And, and, and I really like movement now and how I move and my style, I feel very comfortable with it. And for a long time when I was really involved in parkour, in the parkour scene, like, I hadn't reached that yet. I always mm -hmm. felt like I was behind everyone. That is that interesting, was, actually, because yeah. like I was just going back in my memory of like the things that I have witnessed you do in video and also in person. And I think all of the ones that I'm like, you know, really impressed me. Not the, not the, obviously you do impressive stuff all the time, but like yeah. the, the sort of key moments, like even yesterday, those two things, they've all been in the most recent couple of years when it hasn't really felt like you're actually training that much yeah and i'm not really like i'm not really pushing content or i'm not really yeah. trying to it's something i just do for you've somehow got better by not trying to get better well that was interesting like it's that thing of like taking shut up bro it's that thing <laughs> of like taking a break from something and coming back to it with like fresh perspective and fresh eyes like it can it can really switch up your approach to how you do things like 100%. i think i definitely just had a a distancing from parkour for a number of reasons for the fact that I was just, it wasn't my main focus. Like I was working more and doing other things and having different friends that meant that I wasn't really being going out training as much mm. and having that distance and then coming back to it and doing it and having a good days out training. Like I love this. This is so, yeah, this, yeah. this is so much fun. And yeah, and, and, and also just feeling more confident, being like, well, I've, I've never, like, I'm feeling, I'm starting to find progression now. Mm -hmm. Like it was, I'd said this in a post when I did the IMAX double com, the IMAX 2 double com. Yeah. I was like, all of my friends did this. This is how all my friends felt four years ago. Yeah. And I'm feeling it now. Because mm. that's when in my movement and my abilities, that was when I could actually do something like that. Because I, I didn't feel like I could back in the day. I, I just, I wasn't as confident. I wasn't as strong. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, that must have been a weird feeling, but also so good. Yeah. Realizing that like concrete, especially what IMAX 2 double con because it's such a like a staple piece there. Yeah. When I remember back in the day when someone does it, you know that they've done it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It gets around. Yeah. 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 Even though it's you like, like your, crazy shit has gone. Tin, tra tin yeah. Crazy shit has happened over that gap. But when someone finally gets the confidence to do that. Yeah. Subconsciously, you're like, oh, so that's that guy yeah. or whatever. The catharsis was crazy, man. How's he done that? What? He's, he's, there. he's gone all the way up there. And no, then he's, he's weird. Mm. Um, Sorry, but you, how was, cause I up. wasn't there when you did it, but I want to know more about how the IMAX, right, if people don't know, Sam's the only one or you're the only one to do the running 360 IMAX. 
Uh, Has anyone done that? I haven't seen anyone else do it yet. I don't yet, think anyone else. And you did it at you Bristol, the, right? Yeah. You did it at Bristol over Seb Gap. Yeah. Yeah. Which obviously has which, less which, consequence and like looked pretty easy for you. You did, didn't spend that much time on it. But yeah. for the IMAX running 360 Pro, that it was, I mean, it's fucked. It's the pretty horrible. The setup's horrible. It's horrible. Mm. And I, yeah, I don't know when someone else is going to do that again. Uh, but yeah, I just want to know how that came about and whether you even thought about it before. Yeah. Or whether it was spare at the moment and how you prepped for it and yeah so yeah. it wasn't it wasn't like one of those things where it's like i had the idea and i was like I didn't i'm gonna so. go to imax today to go do this it was yeah. sort of like we got back from the tour and i was living in london at the time so i was quite close and i think travis messaged me he was like oh, i'm at imax da, 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 and a few people are oh, out so this is why it happened <laughs> yeah <laughs> travis um, always does travis. this to people yeah. he does this man he's 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 got a he's got an essence that just He's got a law that just brings out this sort of energy, just send it energy. But yeah, so I arrived and there was a bunch of different people there. A few sort of like heads, I think like Scandrit was there and Nelms and a bunch of, yeah, a bunch of different people. Um, and yeah, I I ended up looking at it because I'd done the one in Bristol mm. and I was looking at the, I don't know why, I was just like, I was just chilling out and training. And I looked at the gap and I was like, this looks smaller than the, than the running 360 pre I did in Bristol. Like, I feel like I'm, I might give it a go. So they're not started, dissimilar, right? What do you mean? So size wise, distance, like just distance. That's not, not that dissimilar. The one in Bristol, the one in Bristol, bigger. I think is bigger because is bigger. when Rachel did it, the, when we look back at the clip, someone's like, says something about IMAX and she's yeah. like, no, that one's bigger than IMAX. So uh, I think okay. it is slightly so, so. bigger. It's just obviously a lot nicer to do. Yeah. Cause it's just a infinite straight run up. Yeah. Perfect step up, big walls. Yeah. Yeah. And it, mm. the thing, yeah, IMAX definitely felt smaller, but the only thing about IMAX was the, th the fact that you have to step up onto the block, then you have your one, two step. And then you've got skinny is, landing. Which is really important for the 360s, having that really nice mm -hmm. one, two. And then, yeah, the skinny ass landing and With having the pole? to like, travel in the yeah. pole, pole next to it. Yeah. And the fact that it's sort of like, it's in front of you, but when you're doing the 360 pre, you have to, like you have to go straight at that spot. That's the only spot you can go to. Yeah, yeah. It's like, not like you've got a big old wide surface area to land on. No. Yeah, and I remember doing the one eighty a few times, and like a few people being like, "Oh, what are you trying? What are you trying to do?" One eighty to the platform. Yeah, so I was just doing the one eighty first, Ugh. like the running, running one eighty. Yeah, yeah, running pre one eighty. And people are like, "Oh, that's cool. Like, what are you what are you doing? What are you looking at?" I'm like, "Oh, I feel like the three sixty might be possible." And then. Bro, like people's ears pricked up and they were like, the running 360, oh, you should do that, you should do that, you should do that. Everyone was gassing me up. I love and that about parkour. Yeah, when someone hears someone prepping for something hard, it, everyone I love it, stops. but also I get sweaty for the person. Oh, really? It's, yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah. when they just voice, are like, oh, I'm kind of interested in doing this. And then it's like, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you know like, what? oh, fuck. Like, now I've said it. It's like, oh, shit. Like, yeah, so then, I, I like the yeah. idea that everyone, like, loves and they really try to help yeah, with yeah, someone yeah, breaking yeah. it. But yeah, it can be quite scary if you don't know it's possible. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. true. And it's sort of, especially in like, I'm going to be, I'm going to be honest. Like I look up, I looked up to a lot of the guys that were there. Like, I think they're cool. And so it was sort of that thing started to come in. It's like, oh, I like, I want to impress, like the impress, like trying to impress people and all of that mm -hmm. stuff and feeling, yeah, feeling like I wanted to, yeah, like get the clip and do it. But mm -hmm. what was crazy is that I still, no one no one had said at any point, no one was like, this, if you do this, it will be a world's first. Are we thought? done? No. <laughs> How disrespectful. <laughs> yeah, you, did, well, you didn't have the thought of like, of yeah, world's like, first. When I was prepping mm -hmm. it, no one said at any point, oh, if you do this, it'll be a world's first. No one's mm -hmm. done this, no one's done I'm this. I'm glad, because I feel like that would have been a lot of pressure for you to Maybe. suddenly be like, oh, yeah. I need to do it now or something. I'm not gonna, yeah, like the, I did feel a little bit of pressure, but also I've been doing parkour for quite a number of years and I've been in that situation before where everyone's looking at you to do something and aghast about an idea. So I felt comfortable and just like I was training in general. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it was it was once I did it because I bounced it the first like the first time I like bounced it, yeah. and that's what everyone was so impressed with. Like, how are you able bouncing to bounce it like yeah. this? I like, want to see. Is there a clip? The, there is a clip somewhere we could. I could well, send it afterwards. In can, I'd love to fucking look at it because a bounce from that must look so strange. It, the bounce was like I think Dom was like, yeah, I'm more impressed by how you're bouncing it than <laughs> wow. the actual thing because like the technique I was doing to bounce it. He was like, how are you, yeah. Getting was, around, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was after I did it and then people were filming. It's like, that's the world's first. And I was like, is it? Yeah. No one's done that. And then, yeah, it was, I felt really, felt very happy. Yeah. I'm very proud. That's fucking cool. It's so cool. Yeah. It is nice. And I think it is important that like, like in some ways it, 
No, I think it, I was going to say in some ways it doesn't matter because you don't want to like, I don't know, it, every time somebody does something, be like, oh, that guy did that first. But yeah. I think actually at the end of the day, going to a spot and knowing something has been done infinitely makes that yeah. easier mm-hmm. mentally to comprehend. Yeah, like so someone's done this battle, someone's unlocked that. So I think it is it is really important that people are recognized. Like, yeah. I, I, yeah, I think people should still commem not commemorate is that the right word but you know what i mean people yeah. should still like hype the fact that yeah. things yeah. have never been done like you before do definitely get some people who look for a a, a, a sort of there's I, a difference I, isn't it it's not like coming to a spot and going i want to be the world's first to do something here or whatever but it's yeah it, it normally, knowing that you did it and then afterwards found out it's more like oh that's sick yeah, yeah. you know but also it normally is i'd say a, a it normally sort of to, to feel hugely significant it needs to be something either massive mm. like travis is like that Kong Double Gainer, yeah, mm-hmm. or something that is very cat- uh, very dictated by the environment, sort of the confines of the environment. I'm just thinking, like, because it would be very easy for I don't know me to go to IMAX and be like, well, no one's done this tic tac combo before. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I'm going to yeah. start here and do that. Da, da, da. It kind no of no one's done a backflip that, on that bit of the yeah, wall. yeah, yeah, yeah like, exactly. It, it, but it's it's those moments that are very much like that gap used to be this and now Mm -hmm. it's like the first time somebody i don't know like i mean old 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 school but leap of faith which is a jump near liverpool street which was like the og gap i've got photos of it there that all the uf guys used to go and jump the first person who flipped that was ashley holland and i mean when he did that like flip gaps were not a thing unless they were (laughs) that far off the floor right and it was like and it's it's happened so many and it's even like I think Stora say it in Roof Culture with Callum's pre between the things. Mm-hmm. It's like, I think Sasha says it. It's like, oh, like someone has now existed in that space. Mm. It's like before yeah. that point, that was never, there was just, it, there's two buildings. No one's been in between. On and that it's like space. now someone yeah, has yeah. been there. That's and it's an like, way of looking and at obviously it. With, with like something like the 360 pre, it's like, well, people have done the running through, but it's like, oh, somebody has now existed mm-hmm. doing I, that. I think it's, it's really cool. Just the fact right, cool. of, because it's, it's like, you can go and do, go to a spot, any spot and do like, you're the first person to train on that spot. Mate, I love it. Stuff. The amount of first, like early gym openings I've been to, yeah. right? And I've I've been there before anyone else because I've been like filming or something. Mm-hmm. And I'll be, and they've literally just finished building an obstacle. And I'll be like, anyone done that? Wool pop. <laughs> like, you know, something that's like not even that hard. Yeah, and I'll do yeah. it and be like, world's first. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Did that first. Mic drop. And I've done it a few times. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> funny. But it's, it's the fact that IMAX is just such an iconic, iconic like one of the most world's most iconic spots and yeah. the fact that so many people do look for world's first like and people get excited about it i mean just look at fat now like they're just they're still finding crazy ridiculous yeah, yeah, stuff yeah, yeah. happening at that spot which yeah, i like, love to Dilla see did like mm-hmm. the kong Prix plyo the other day he did he did uh, what kong Pri, wait was it no was it kong Pri? no I th- maybe it was just standing plyo what damn you know, you know, like I the normal well, yeah, I've Oh, it. to the rail uh, afterwards. I think he, he he's kind of, I think he got to the wall. Did he? Yeah, yeah he got to so. the blue wall. We have to have a look at it. But I don't think he did. The blue that. wall. Yeah, yeah. I think it was. <laughs> That's funny. I think it was <laughs> just. What other kind of wall? <laughs> well, some he of them are to the blue wall. Blue wall. Some blue. of them are black now. Oh yeah. Oh, it looks like there's a massive hole as well. Yeah. I kind of. It looks like a human hole. So I was like, did someone? Oh, you actually mean in the platform? Yeah. That goes all the way to the floor. Yes. If you're falling through there, then you're. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The Good hole. night, naughty. <laughs> <laughs> See, this, so now, this, is when, yeah. this is when the podcast That's what I thought the podcast going. was going to be from the start. Yeah. <laughs> Weird voices. Oh, maybe it should have been that. No, I think, they, they, I, I'll release all your interview bloopers <laughs> oh somewhere gosh. on YouTube, private on a channel that so someone can find it. Directors, there needs to be an extras version of the film, and there is just, what is it, 20 minutes? It's what? 10 minutes, is it? Is it 10? Oh, it's 10 minutes of just cut out the weird stuff. So it'll be like three second bursts of Sam talking and then going, blah, He'll something. speak very coherently yeah. and be like, oh, yes. And then we traveled through this part of the UK and we did it. And then it'll be like, blah. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it's quite intense minutes. to watch. Like, it kind of makes me feel exhausted for it's myself. Exa- in I've, the interview. So I've watched it once and I've heard it being played. Like, I've sat on that sofa. You were playing it to Travis the other day, right? Yeah. And I was getting stressed <laughs> at how, like, just loud. It is. How much? Yeah. How much I'm Ev- like vocal. Like, everyone's so reaction vocal is the same as well. It's Most like, people's reaction is like, oh, like <laughs> laugh, 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 and then it's just. And then they're like, like "Is he just, all right?" Yeah, because yeah. it goes on for so long. Like, oh my god, it's still going. Yeah. And yeah. then it's just kind of yeah. 
anyone else in interviews is like they get more and more fatigued and by the end they're just trying to get a sentence out they're like oh, oh he was playing the guitar I, at the end I think, I, wrong. I, think <laughs> I, was getting, about I was just getting more and more tipsy yeah, yeah you were drinking we were getting more and more giggly and the thing with mine and Keelan's like giggly energy is that it's it like builds. You, it yeah. builds it builds till it, the extremes of like we need to stop because either something's going to break or someone's <laughs> going to get hurt or yeah, that's something. how I thought this podcast was going to go. To be honest, but really, it's been a it's been a very. I feel nice like you guys should have briefed me on that before because no, I've come you to can't. Like, Learn motor podcast. Let's get into like <laughs> draw. You, know you can't mean? force it. I think if you've been you know having a few beers, then it probably would have gone the other way. But I think we've had a really good chat. I've been. I've really appreciated. So. It. I mean, I really appreciate that earlier as well because it's actually so interesting the fact that we've never talked about the whole broom and motors, yeah 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 uh, dynamic and mm-hmm. or, everything that went on during that time. Which there's still so much to just go into that's interesting to speak about um, yeah mm-hmm. but it was just nice to touch on that i want to say while we were talking about you doing parkour i feel like if you did i know it's not your direction but if you did push your parkour out to the world you could be one of those people who are invited to events a lot and like mm. you're like you're gonna speak no but, for some reason i just want to put my mouth against the microphone but, <laughs> but i don't know where the spider's gone now actually. but like you could be one of those Spidey. people who are like you know invited to every event and doing this right not just trying to big you up but it's just funny it, it's funny how your someone's just direction that's how it like yeah that's how it works because you're you, it's not just the ability yeah. just by being good at parkour doesn't it unfortunately needs it's marketing you have to yeah, yeah. but it's not really yeah. what your path is right now and it could change i was talking to jack literally before the podcast who's also doing filmmaking but it's T- also T-N-E. Yeah, Jack Tierney, yeah. yeah. Tierney, yeah. Uh, who's also doing filmmaking like me, but also is really into rollerblading. It's like, it's so weird, like us trying to do this and at the same time, just being on the cusp of putting a bit more energy into this extreme mm. sport that we'd actually be able to make it. Yeah. Like, do you ever think about it? To, I do. There's, there's one thing that I've really been hoping to do, which is make a solo video. Just like, <laughs> yeah. and like direct my own film about me and my movement. Like Bo Burnham's what? No, sorry, Bo Burnham. The Inside. Inside. Inside, yeah, but... And yeah, I, you're both tall. Cool. Yeah, we are both tall. You're both tall. pretty we're wacky. Both weird. Yeah. yeah. Please do an inside, but parkour. Well, the thing outside. is, outside. <laughs> yeah, I would. It would. It would definitely. It wouldn't just be a parkour show. I know it, it would, would be no, something. Yes, it it be. would be an experience to watch, ideally, and that's how I've imagined it. It would be a video. Please do it, I, on, I honestly, because really like time, time will go past. Time is running time out. Time is running out. You <laughs> will die. Fucking hell. But yeah, denialism. Mm. Um, you see yourself doing that it uh it does yeah time does go because i've had ideas like well, i mean i was meant to do 30 before 30 which yeah. is i wanted to do 30 hard challenges before i turned 30 oh now i'm 31 about to turn 32 and how many did you get done uh, well i didn't actually write them out right i just came up with an idea but i never actually this oh, is you never actually did you're like the, i'm going to do <laughs> I, the, I have the idea to do 30 challenges before i die and then yeah. you're like 30 and you're like that was Mate, i'm idea. not dying when i'm 30 <laughs> Jesus Christ. I didn't even catch that you yeah. did that. I completely blacked out, man. Like, I did it. It was only because Tony Hawk did 50 before 50. He, like, revisited. Well, there you like, go. You can do 50 before 50. <laughs> you have to... If I do it with if 20 years... If he dies at 30, years, you'll never make it to 50. I think he did it on his in his 49th year. I think if I did it... If I did 50 before 50 now, it's like I could go Keelan. <laughs> so do, easy, yeah. Do 25 before 25. Yeah. You'd be like, all right. Yeah, I'm pretty chill. Um, but, yeah, I definitely, I definitely will be striving to make a parkour video film mm. just to just about me <laughs> movie film video film. movie film I, I just want to see you more in the community and yeah i just want to see you mix with that without it yeah. like without compromising your like film aspirations well know? here's the thing man like what you're saying about um here's the thing man um <laughs> what you're saying about doing it i'm actually deciding to take a break from doing commercial work and just focusing on doing some film passion projects and some projects I want to do, which might include doing the um, doing my own solo video, because um, mm-hmm. I actually want to start doing it. It's to the point where I'm like, I either like stop working so I just have time to try and focus my energy on that, yeah. or I keep half working and not really ever do do the ideas which I want to pursue. So mm-hmm. hopefully, in the next sort of year, I'll be able to have something to show of these aspirations. Very nice. Yeah. So should we? I, I feel like. We should probably it'd wrap be, it for it. It would be good to wrap up on. Yeah. Oh, it would be good to wrap. You... Do you want to put a beat on? <laughs> no, I actually, good. you know what's funny? I had in my notes, it just says freestyling. And I don't know whether there's going to be a think, section I in. Think, I think we spoke, bloggy uh, not, not for him to do it on mic, because we don't know what's going to come out of his mouth. But he, Sam is, yeah, he's a professional freestyle. No, two, no, two seconds. Stop. No. Hocus pocus, mom, the coolest. <laughs> Sorry. 
Bloggy, <laughs> did you do that end of day? That wasn't a shot fired. Thank you very much, you're a hero. <laughs> Big love. Um, say say something to the mic, Bloggy. I feel like you're not getting the exposure that you have gotten on previous. We yeah. will do a podcast with you soon. I'm just waiting for people to become more aware of your existence. Yeah, until I'm relevant. Well, you you're are relevant. relevant. You're very yeah. fucking. You're very relevant. I'm just very tired. I've been doing the orders and I'm chilling. Very tired. And it's very, very nice listening to this. To be honest, like the reason it's been on static shot this whole time is because you're all talking. Yeah, nice. I, expl- really, I, yeah. I explain so hopefully people understand if they're still watching. Mm-hmm. But mm. Marks will still be watching, going, oh, "You say like too many times." <laughs> uh, how much time we got left on that little dial? Uh, nine minutes and twenty five seconds. Oh, interesting. Oh, uh, all right, nine how minute freestyle. Interesting. Go. Nine minute freestyle. Well, we have to put in. We'll have to put in a. A phone. A phone. Would you do it? I can try. Can you? Can we actually put in a phone? Should yeah, of course you can. Should but you need to get the audio out there. The Have you got royalty free oh. beats? Yeah, let me come. Let me come in. That's, oh, that's the postman. All right. So if you're still here after, I think, nearly two hours of podcast, well, we, we're we going to end this. this. Well over two hours. Might have to cut this. Where are you going? He's getting his phone. Are they royalty free? We won't get... the yeah, I got the dongle. Uh, my phone, are we going to get copyright striked? No. There you go. Okay. So have you got a phone? I've got a phone. Do you know what's on Spotify? All right, so if you're still here, you get a treat. Because Sam, he does this. I love it how we've suddenly decided this God. is happening. I can't, yeah, we, I said, we before, said we weren't so going to freestyle rap. Please don't say it? anything that's going to involve me needing to edit this. You're going to, yeah, I, I, I mean, no, this is no. the thing. It's like, this is the risk. We, you might have to edit Don't this. cancel yourself. By now, you'll know if there's that's a cut. That's the hard thing, because with freestyling, you're meant to say no filter because it's just like, say what is in your mind. Unfortunately, a lot of what comes out of your mind- A lot of hip hop's like, about drugs and sex and violence. Uh, so are these- I hope people don't mind if I go American because it's much easier to oh, go Oh, please. He's always <laughs> doing an American. So, the, but we need to play stuff that isn't going to get us um, it blocked, it banned. Okay. Uh, What's the word? Yeah. Well, like ten, it doesn't matter if we can't run ads on it, but I don't want to get the video not put on YouTube because okay. then people can't witness the, this whole spectacle. So. so what? how do I find royalty-free beats? I don't know. Probably what, like... What were you going to play? Because it's probably not really that like... Probably... He won't mind. <laughs> he won't mind. He might Drake not. won't mind. He won't mind. Let's see. Do you mind? Top five, top five, top five. Top five. Top five. <laughs> nah, Drake doesn't mind. I guess um, actually. All right. Yeah, What's the name? listeners and viewers. I guess listeners can listen to it. Oh. Viewers, if this video cuts out, it's because I tried to upload it once and it got blocked and I chopped yeah. off the end. So if it cuts out, go and listen to this. Uh, and thank you very much for watching. Love you, bye. Uh, okay, we need that. So that's, that's covered us. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> that's the outro. We want this. Oh, here we go. Time is, time is ticking. Okay, okay, how long have we got? Cool, cool. Seven cool. minutes, 30 seconds. Seven okay, minutes. Seven minutes. Coming. I'd be impressed if you did seven minutes of freestyle. Oh, is it yeah. on? Is it working? Oh, you have to. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. We getting trippy with it, walking down the road. I got downs and he's speaking microphones, ayy. I got the cameras three up, ayy. You wanna know, cause I get the re-up, ayy. It tastes good, because I know I'm always playing on the flute, ayy. I know I'm trying to come in through the shoot, ayy. I'm like a P, always rapping to the beat, ayy. Because I know I'm always looking at the sea like, ooh, I wanna swim in the boat tonight. I wanna go because I'm going down my own throat tonight. Because I'm like the Chris tonight. I'll come in with your Superman. Kill him in a sec because I'm Superboy. Because I know I wanna go hoi hoi. I'm in the rap game and I want to get a rap play when I'm playing board games and I don't care about this beat, yo, because I'm coming in dancing on my feet, oh, because I said a letter from the alphabet, but you missed it because I said, oh, and I said A, because I said yay, because I said I get the waves on the cream because I want to get seen by people that don't know that I got the nitro beam, the nitro steam coming from my eyes for lean because I want to get no words that make any sense. Motherfucker, no, I'm coming in a past tense because I want to get my legs so damn long, they call me long boy jumps all the way until he gets the bong. And then he smokes it and goes in before he croaks it. Like a frog, he knows he's never thought about it. I ain't said something weird yet. A motherfucker know I'm always win on your weird yeti. Because I wanna get confetti with the spaghetti coming in for shitty ready because the acapella goes slutty. Ayy, this beat's whack. <laughs> that was. <laughs> okay. Are we doing more? Yeah. Oh. It's really, I'm on edge because like a lot of, usually you say stuff that is too explicit for a podcast. <laughs> Our landlord is upstairs like, what the fuck is going on downstairs? If you take your headphones uh-huh. off, it sounds mental. 
Oh, this I win. Oh, I mean, this is how I'm okay. it, you know? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, hey, I got Denzel Curry instrumental on the beat. We're definitely gonna get demonetized cause we ain't got this worldy free track on tap. Motherfucker know I'm coming in like a Cadillac. I'm on the danger lag, jumping off it cause I know I'm about to get out of my socket cause I got the new sprocket because I know I wanna fuck the bitches every day for an hour. Motherfucker be so sour, tasting bitches off the hour. Oh no, I'm saying bad things, please don't mute me. I just wanna go and have a fruit shoot for loot. Because I don't wear Gucci I'm not a weirdo I just wanna have some weird flow Messing with the people Never know that I got that Yo, I got a snapback But I don't pop that Ayy, because I'm hitting back Flips up off the wall Motherfucker eat a shit Because I'm doing a stall I'm on my skateboard Walking around town With all the people Yo, because I'm at the top Of the steeple Like I'm a religious man Because I like the God Everybody wanna come Because I like the car Because I'm not like the boys From school that told me no Motherfucker be coming in with some hit heavy slow flows because you know I go oh hey triplets I ain't got that fuck I don't even know it because I know like a motherfucker about to poet no metaphors no rhythm motherfucker had a circumcision but I'm not Jewish cause I wanna know I say boo to the fucking booish yo because I know this ain't the thing thing the thing thing game <laughs> God damn. Amazing. Okay, yeah, enough of that. That was that was actually very impressive. The I'll second give you one was the second I one said was something really bad at one point. He just said fucking bitches. Yeah, but that's bad. Well, it's bad. Yeah, but you don't meet. You're, you're just rapping. Okay. You're, you're being a hip hopper. I'm being a hip hopper. You're being. No, you're not. I know you're not actually like that. <laughs> this is gonna be the biggest meme now. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to have a real ego. Mate, experience. people are gonna edit Start this out. About the Dame de Lac. Yeah, yeah, people are gonna cut this oh, out and it. make a parkour video to it. Mm. That will happen. Hopefully, wow. someone do it. Yeah. Uh, how we doing on time, Bloggy? Four minutes, 25 seconds. Four minutes. Wow. Right. I mean, Four I mean, twenty. What, what was everyone's experience of that? I, I'm just very, I mean, I was concerned about the volume because you have a very deep, booming voice. Was that voice. quite loud? Well, yeah, but Sorry. you know, it's a one-off experience. <laughs> um, I just, I, I can't do it. Like, I, I always think like, could I do it if I really tried? But I, my brain doesn't get it. Yeah. I no, can't, I can't so, jump Have you that tried quickly. it? Not properly. It's the thing, the thing with I it, couldn't, I don't. The thing is, I couldn't try it on my own. I don't think because I would just give up. He I'd gets people like, to do it. If you're in a circle and people start doing it, it comes around to you. I'd be so self conscious. Yeah, well, I, same. It's fucking. You, you have to not take it seriously. Yeah. You have to be yeah. re- like the fun. The fun part of it is say, is messing up and saying weird things. Like once you realize, mate, like, the shit you recorded in the car on the way when you were driving with. <laughs> yeah, it's. Wait, who it's are you with? It was you and Matt, Max, Max and Rachel. They recorded like what half an hour an hour. Yeah, it's like, very long. You are just freestyling for so long, <laughs> going back and forth between the three of you. It's insane. Like, some of it works. Some of it is just downright so not. But okay then you bring it say. back. <laughs> yeah, then you bring it back it's to good. Awful. Like, but also, some of it's really fluid, and others like mm. it's just a repeat. But yeah, I, 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 we were saying this earlier. It's like freestyling. It's kind of like having Tourette's because you've yeah. got like. You, you, essentially what you're trying to do is keep up with the rhythm and keep up with the flow and keeping words come out of your mouth that mm-hmm. rhyme and also sometimes make sense. And, and doing that- Bitches just rhymes with snitches. And it's just, like, uh, it's unfortunate that sometimes you just say weird things. <sighs> yeah, maybe I'll edit that out just in, <laughs> just in case. <laughs> it's right at the end though, what's Just time? in case, it's the end. We were doing so minutes. well, we were doing so at well. At least I know where it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, it wasn't majorly offensive, it was just one of those slightly questionable things to anyone just, listening. Yeah. Nothing awful. <laughs> <laughs> less, less cancelable, more offensive. Mm-hmm. We don't want to be rude to people. Yes. Um, right. Sam, do you have anything to tell the people? Um, I think you just said it in the freestyle, to be honest. Like, yeah. Like, where can they where can they find you and for any of your shit? You can find me on at longboyjumps on Instagram. And if you want to hire me for professional work, you can go <laughs> to my mate, really any, outdated website. If cool. anyone just listened to that and now wants to hire you, fair play. <laughs> They're your new friend. They yeah. got through that freestyle. Yeah, true. So true. No, but no, it's, been, it's been a pleasure. Thanks for having me on. It's been I've really fun. Very much nice enjoyed it. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. Yeah. Yeah, we should... I, I don't think... Right. I think we should speak soon in like three minutes time when we stop recording. Yeah, carry on great. Speaking. Yeah, see you guys mm. in a sec. Yeah. Well, that's it. <laughs> all right. Cool. Fucking hell. I wonder who's made it to the end of this. Yeah, I right. You all have, but you know. Rate on Spotify, share mm-hmm. stuff. Please go check out Sam's stuff as well. Yeah. And if you do see him, then talk to him about stuff because he's a very lovely guy. Cool. All right. <laughs> Bye. Love you. Later. Peace. You can spit over this if you want. <laughs>
<laughs> it's about to end. <laughs> oh, he was going to. Probably. 